brothers and sisters and friends and to my loyal enemies. This is the truth of God again. For you that are watching around the world, we're here live this evening out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Hey Amen. Looks beautiful to see the many jam-packed in here to eat the same grub. To all of our beloved brothers and sisters and to our guest ministers that are present and to the millions that are watching, I say like the scripture says, it is good for us to be here. We are indebted to the one true living God for his divine wisdom and his perfect and infallible understanding of all things. Amen. He's a God that have no errors. Amen. He have no flaws. Amen. And it's impossible for him to make mistakes. God have no partners. We associate none to be with God equal to God, greater than God. We bear witness there's only one true living God that made heaven and earth, and Christ is he. We are blessed this evening. Last time I was here some years ago, my secretary got the wrong room, and it couldn't hold everybody. We got the right room this time and still can't hold everybody. <laughs> but we are thankful to God as this year is moving along very quickly. Before I go any further, uh, my wife who desired to be here but got stuck in Washington, D.C. with my daughter. But today is my wife's birthday and I want to say happy birthday, oh, Sister oh, Jenny. Oh, God forever keep you and preserve you that when the Lord come, you along with many others will be counted worthy to go back with our Lord in peace. That's our desire, isn't it? Somebody say, I'll be glad when I see the Lord. Wait a minute. Let us just have a clear understanding Everybody going to see the Lord. But everybody's not going to see the Lord in peace. The book of Scripture says, every eye shall see him. So the wicked and the righteous, the holy and the unholy, you're going to see him. But uh, everybody won't be ready to go back with him. Now let me just update our brothers and sisters that are here and that are watching of the progress that is taking place around the world. 2021 has been a, I guess, a year of mixed emotion for many of us. Progress surrounded by death, work of the Lord forever increasing. But uh, the word of God is being preached. I received a contact this week how God is doing such an excellent job internationally. Our minister reached us out of Singapore, Minister Pastor Demetrius, and uh, there are many preachers along with their congregations have a desire to walk with holiness. And we have some ministers in a foreign country that we have to interview some more now. A pastor in this congregation come to walk of this truth out of Israel. A pastor in this congregation out of Cambodia. A pastor in this congregation out of Malaysia. And several pastors in their churches out of the Philippine Islands. And uh, it just keeps growing everywhere. 
They're coming from Asia. They're coming from Switzerland. We got mail pouring in out of Damascus, out of Vietnam, out of Central Africa, South Africa, in the Congo, out of Ethiopia. God has sent this message back and he's sending it back where it was before. And the beautiful thing about it is we didn't take no shortcut. We didn't have to put on a fake healing meeting. We didn't have to blow on nobody and they fall out. We didn't have to wave our hand over nobody and all of a sudden they need a back catcher to catch them. And we didn't have to change doctrine. To get one person. We done it the way it's written. They continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. And we won't change to get one member. And we won't change to keep one member. I want to say to all the brothers and sisters of the First Church of the Lord Jesus Christ in Monroe, Louisiana, we'll be making settlement soon now on the new Monroe, Louisiana temple. Also to the new location in Jackson, Mississippi, we'll be making settlement there on our new temple in Jackson, Mississippi. To all of our brothers and sisters in Johannesburg, South Africa, we went there one time and had a midweek meeting on a Wednesday and a Thursday and baptized close to 300 souls in two days. Well, the Lord had blessed us, found the temple seating about 600 or more, I believe with the school and administration bill. And uh, we'll be make settlement on that. Our inspector have already inspected the property and uh, we've been making settlement on that now in about a few more weeks also, God willing. So, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, even though there are countless of enemies that don't like it, it's just as easy to stop this as it is for a cat to swallow a tsunami. <laughs> Glory to God, and you know they ain't happy. I'm glad for... Minister Juan here, he gave me his testimony. He was a Baptist preacher, Baptist pastor. And he heard the truth of God message of holiness. Went down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ and Minister Harris baptized him. And uh, he left the Baptist organization and started taking the stand for holiness and he said, you know, I consider you my pastor. I said, all right, well, we'll get a chance to talk to him some more. He also desired the walk of the truth of the gospel. This is a tight walk. Every preacher, every pastor, every elder, I don't care what you call yourself, God only have one church. One people. One doctrine to govern his church. Man has set up religion, theology, philosophy, various teachings to appeal to the wickedness of the human family. Not to change the human family because the Lord says, if they have stood in my counsel and have caused my people to hear my word, then he would have turned them from the evil of their way and from the evil of their doing. The problem with the churches, you're not hearing God's word. You're hearing the word of some old reverend. Some old Jerry Curl head false prophet. You're hearing seminary school messages. Theology have corrupt church, have crept in church, 
and have rearranged church. Until the thinking of God, the intelligence of God, the standard of God, the way of God have been moved out of church and the ways of men have took over because it feels better. Sounds better. Put a bigger smile on your face. Encourage you to ignore sin. That you believe in you're going to heaven anyhow. You know, when I came out of falsehood, Amen. that was a song we used to sing. You know, you can sing a lot quick as you can tell one. Amen. Song we used to sing, I'm going to heaven anyhow. Yeah. Ain't nobody going to heaven anyhow. In fact, it's more easier to go to hell. So I'm saying, what, Pastor Jennings? I'm living all I know. Wonderful. But it's more easier to be lost than to be saved. Think of it. Glory to God. How many things did Adam do to get put out to God? How many? To go back with God. He spoke by the Apostle Paul, born in Tarsus in the city of Cilicia, set under the feet of Gamaliel, who taught him according to the perfect manner of the law. And Gamaliel himself was a doctor of the law, a Pharisee, meaning a believer of the spirit world. The Apostle Paul came out the first tribe that gave Israel their king. He was a Benjamite. Came out the tribe of Benjamin, who was the youngest son of Jacob. Amen. Grandson of Isaac and great grandson of Abraham. Amen. The apostle Paul was made an apostle. Amen. Called and sent by God. Not elected by a board of directors. Amen. He said, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. Being made an apostle, his information was given to him from God. Yeah. Not from the university. No, not from the college. No, not from seminary school. No, Being that he had information from God, everywhere he went, he brought people the thoughts of God yeah. that was opposite from what Paul would bring. Yeah. You know, that's what God did to his preaching. He make them bring. Yes, sir. What he normally wouldn't bring. In fact, he make him preach against his own self. Anytime a man say he's of God and he don't preach against himself, he's of the devil. Are you listening? Glory to God. Hey, hallelujah. Glory to God. Every God sin preacher. Preach against himself. For the apostle Paul said, when I would do good. Evil. Is present. And he was an apostle. What you mean, Paul? When I would do good, my will is present. That's right. My feelings is present. What I think is present. Amen. So what I got to do, the same thing that God didn't put in me, I have to bring myself under subjection, lest I be cast away. Holy. What do you mean, lest you be a castaway? You know, when you are on a ship and your ship get wrecked, you are a castaway. You're stranded. So when Paul say, lest I be cast away, lest I be stranded. But when you're stranded, you're stranded left somewhere. Stranded where? In hell. So I know many of you that are watching now, you don't like me, and I don't care if you don't. I'm not trying to win a popularity contest with nobody. I'm sent to do the will of him. I'm not sent to do the will of them. I'm sent to do the will of him that sent me. Holiness. It's the way of God. Yeah. Holiness yeah. is the thoughts of God. Yeah. Holiness 
It's the teaching of God. I just want to answer the millions of questions. What is holiness? Is that a new religion? No, 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 no. Holiness is older than the universe itself. And ain't no religion can make that claim. Every religion was started by some man. Holiness had no start. That's right. That's right. That's right. All right, listen to the old man. That's right. Holiness had no beginning. No beginning. God, before the foundation of the world, meaning before the world was, he purposed for man to be holy. You better go to work in the book of Ephesians. I just want to itemize this. What is holiness? You know, many apostolics was criticizing me first for using it, but now they starting to use it. Or and said, holiness and apostolic is the same thing. Well, if it was, then I can read holiness, but I can't read apostolic. That's right. Holiness is the thinking of God for man's behavior. That man behavior may be transformed and he reflects the characteristics of God. Yeah. He think the thoughts of God. Yeah. And he live according to the purpose of God. Yeah. Are you listening? That's, right. yeah. That's how God chose us in him. In him. Yeah. All right, let's go to work. William. Let's establish what is holiness. Mm -hmm. And then let's establish who is holy. That's right. Are you listening? In the book of Ephesians chapter 1. All right, viewers, you get around your television and your computer. Amen. Tell your girlfriend, being that she's already there, she might as well just stay around a little bit longer to hear this. And, and then after she's done, then holiness will tell her what to do. That's right. Bishop, you that got your second wife, you and your second wife might as well gather around the campfire that burn holiness. That's right. You'll find out what holiness have in store for you and your adulterous husband. Amen. You that profess all these religions and you brag about being Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Branhamites, Hittites, Jubasites, Amakites, Goodwinites, Hunnanites, Johnson Knights, and some fools declare themselves even to be Jenna Knights. I want to kill everybody. That's right. Huh? That's right. Non-denominational, Pentecostal, Jehovah Witnesses, Five Percenters, Mormons, Muslims, whatever you claim. My question is to the world, who started you? That's right. Who came with this authority to make this first declaration and then told you to be what you are? That's right. Did it come from heaven? How is it that everybody claimed to be the children of God, but yet very few wants to be what God is? That's right. To my Hebrew Israelite brothers, is God a Hebrew? Hmm. Oh, Pastor Jenny, you say Jesus Christ is God. Jesus was a Hebrew, came out of the tribe of Judah. That's right. But was God a Hebrew? Yeah. Jesus Christ was God, and God was not a Hebrew. The Son of God, his flesh, that body was a Hebrew, came out of the tribe of Judah, but God is before Hebrews. That's right. That's right. For there was any Jews, God was here. That's right. And then God made a child in David's house. And by him making a child in David's house, now the Son of God is called Son of Man. What you mean, Son of Man? The man is David, and David was the father of Jesus. That's right. Someone said, what? Yeah. David was Jesus' father? 
Yeah. In the book of St. Luke, chapter 1 and verse 32. Follow me in your Bible. Well, I thought Jesus didn't have no fire. Father, earthly father. He did and he didn't. That's right. He didn't have no earthly father by a man laying with Mary, but he had an earthly father by coming from a descendant. That's right. Glory to God. I want to take my time and soak you. Amen. Let's go to school now. Book of Luke Let's get some one. Bible. Let's see, get, listen at this. Luke chapter 1, we'll start at verse 31. Follow me. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. Thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son. And shalt call his name Jesus. Yeah. He shall be great. He shall be great. And shall be called the son of the highest. Shall be called the son of the eternal father. That's right. That just hit you, didn't it? Did it again, he shall be called what? He shall be called the son of the highest. He shall be called the son of the eternal father. The highest is the eternal father. The eternal father is God. God is Jehovah. Jehovah is the I am. That's right. Mary wasn't God mother. No. Mary was the mother of the earthly tabernacle that God was in. That's right. Come on, man. The earthly tabernacle was a body. Right. The body was a house. The house was a man child. That's the right. man child was human, and the spirit that was in it was divine. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? He shall be great. He shall be great. And shall be called the son of the high. And what? And the Lord God shall give look unto him. Look at here. Look at here. Look at here. And the Lord the God, Lord God shall, shall give unto him, him the throne of who? Of his father, David. Gonna give him what? And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. That's what the title "Son of Man" means. That's right. Son of Man. That's right. He come from the house of a prophet. That's right. And that man was David. David. Yeah. All right. Let's go back to Ephesians now. I want to take my time and itemize this holy business. <laughs> That's right. Come on, William. In the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and we're at verse 4. Follow me. According as he hath chosen us in him. Hold it. Hold it. I just can't read this stuff. I see too much. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Let's itemize it precept upon precept and then we got to do it the way the word advises. it. That's he right. He said line upon line. Upon line. Upon line. So that means you just can't read one line and keep going. Yeah. You got to look at it line upon line. upon line. And then when you look at it line upon line, you got to break it down here a little and there a little. And there a little. Listen at this. Acc in Ephesians 1 and verse 4. That's what? According as he. Hold it. That lets you know it's one. <laughs> That's right. He. Not according to as they. According as he. According to as he. He who God. That's right. Has did what? Has chosen, chosen us. or selected the human family. In him. In him. Before the foundation of the world. That what? That we should be holy. Yes. All right. yeah. Holiness. Holy. 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 It's before the world was. That's yeah. right. All of my guests that are here from various religions, Catholics, Episcopalians, Protestants, Klansmen, Black Panthers, yeah. Nation of Islam, Mormon, Muslims, yes. Masons, Elks, Eastern Stars, Falling Stars. <laughs> That's right. Glory to God. That's right. Whatever you want to call yourself. Yeah. Who is the founder? Of your religion. That's right. Did God speak to your founder and gave your founder his religion? Hmm. When God give out anything for the people to live by, yeah. he tell the people to search the scriptures. Search the scriptures. Why do he tell us to search the scriptures? To verify. That's right. To certify. That's right. And after you verify and certify, now you can justify. That's right. Eh? That's right. You go to scripture to certify it, to justify it, and you get all your information from scripture. You know, there's a lot of people write me and get angry because I run to scripture for everything. For everything. Right. Some say you're mighty narrow-minded. You're so narrow-minded. Why don't you go to the library? I I think about no library. No. You mean to tell me the intelligence of God ain't good enough for me? Amen. Well, 
what's in the library? Give me Colossians. Colossians. Let's warn us about the usage of man wisdom. That's right. In Colossians chapter 2 and at follow verse me, 8. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Give chapter and verse. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. That's what? Beware. That's a warning right there. Right there. Warning. warning. That's right. Warning. Beware. Give chapter and verse again, William. Colossians chapter 2 and at the 8th verse. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Beware. Look out. Lest any man spoil you through Let's philosophy. Go. Any man. Any man. Suppose it's your father. Any man. Your uncle. Any man. Your husband. Any man. Your twin brother. Any man. Your slap happy grandpappy. Any man. Amen. Amen. Beware. Beware. Beware lest any man spoil you. Suppose he's rich. Any man. Right. Right. Amen. Right. Play for the Panthers. Any man. Play for the Hornets. Any man. I'm in Charlotte. I'm right here in your town. <laughs> That's right. I don't give two cents how rich you are. That's right. You know, NBA players, NBA players, and NFL players, and hockey players, and soccer players, many of them watch this program. Many of them stop in the church. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes I don't know him. Sometimes brothers came to me, do you know what I said? Such and such and such, you know, he's a millionaire, he's a ball player. I look at him and tell him what I care. It wasn't <laughs> Jesus that came in. That's right. Now, if Jesus walk in, I drop at your feet. Oh, yes. Otherwise, in that, use nothing but a human being to me. That's right. And rich people die just like poor people. Come on. Amen. I don't care who you are. God set one thing for everybody. That's right. And everybody got to do the same thing in order to get into the kingdom of God. Yes. Listen. Beware lest any man spoil you. Beware. Beware. Does any man spoil you? Spoil. Hold it, hold it right spoil. there. Spoil. When meat is spoiled, it's no good. No good. It's been ruined. That's right. And this is what have happened in churches. Amen. Your church have spoiled you. Spoiled you. Amen. Fake healing meetings. That's right. Somebody blow on you, fall on the floor. Amen. That's right. Uh, my son sent me an article from Africa. You know, I heard of a lot of hypocrisy, but this was one that not only take the cake, it took the cake and threw it out the window. <laughs> now, what I'm about to tell you is the epitome of trifleness yeah. and the sadness of deception. Come on, come on. A young false prophet in Africa, I wish I knew his name. See, can you pull it up real quick, son, while, while you're sitting there? And see, can you pronounce his name? Because this broadcast covers Africa. Amen. And I want to get a hold of this false prophet in a biblical sleeper hole. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he, Pastor Christ Penelope hmm. of South Africa. Amen says, and they got pictures of him doing this, and people criticize me for condemning false prophets. I want to show you how these worthless, no good things will get the people to believe anything, and the false prophet's success of deception hangs on your ignorance. That's right. Always remember that. That's right. No false prophet can successfully trick you Amen. Unless you're ignorant. That's right. The more ignorant you are, the more he can use you. Yeah. This false prophet in South Africa sits on his member's face and on his member's head and said the Lord told him to pass gas upon them. Listen. And he convinced them that if you take the smell home, the Lord will make you rich. And they got pictures of him. I mean, I'm not making this up. Pictures of this man sitting on his member's head. My Lord. Then there's another false prophet in Africa. All the women is laying on their stomach in front of the false church. And the men is in back of the women holding their ankles. 
and the men is on their knees with their behind up in the air. And the bishops or elders or pastors got on the false prophets' robes with belts, beating the men. Beating the men. The sad thing that got me thundering and hitting hard is men and women let these trifling, no good Paul Pitt dogs That's right. come in the name of Jesus and make the fool out of you. That's right. You mean to tell me you want to be rich that bad that a man can pass gas? Sit on your husband's face. My Lord. He's a pulpit pervert. That's right. That's right. That's right. Where do these men get these antics? They love watching the false prophets from America. That's right. In Jamaica, Brother Minister Gary emailed me and sent me a news report. And that's what a preacher is. He's a divine journalist. But the Apostle Paul said, who hath believed our report? Or we'll take God into whom is the arm of the Lord revealed. A false prophet in Jamaica, the police arrested him. Uh, he was going to sacrifice along with some of his parishioners. About 144 people murdered him. My Lord. To believe they're doing God will. About three people got killed within the false church. My Lord. But the police caught him, arrested him. My Lord. And they complained about me speaking out against the false prophets. Right. The Bible says to his preachers, cry loud. Cry loud, spare not. Ain't that what he said? That's right. Besides criticizing me for speaking against false prophets, you have to ask yourself, why is there so many men quiet? That's right. About the false prophets. Cry aloud, spare not. Because the Bible sounds the alarm. In Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 1. The alarm. Cry aloud, spare not. Cry aloud and take it easy. Cry aloud, spare not. No. Cry aloud and be cool. Cry aloud, spare not. Cry aloud and don't hurt their feelings. Cry aloud, spare not. That's right. Don't spare them. That's it doesn't matter if they cry, don't spare them. Spare not. It doesn't matter if they put a contract out on you, don't spare them. Spare not. That's right. If they send hit men from Africa to America, what do I care? Spare not. Don't spare them. That's right. That's right. Cry aloud, spare not. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Lift up your voice like a coward. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. No, like a coward. Like a trumpet. Be scared. Like a trumpet. Hallelujah. That's it. What make these Hallelujah. men so quiet? Hallelujah. Because you viewers have paid your pastor off. That's right. Paid him to shut up. That's right. Paid him to turn his back. That's right. As long as you pay his gas, his rent, his mortgage, buy his cars, buy his suits, he ain't gonna speak out against your wrong. No, no. no, no, no. I wouldn't care if you gave the church a million dollars every hour. That's right. I tell you the truth while you're writing the check. That's right. That's Why? Right. Because everything in this life is temporary. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Only God himself is eternal. Cry out, spare not. Cry out, spare, spare not. Don't spare. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Lift it up how? Like a trumpet. Hallelujah. You know, everybody can't play a trumpet. You know, a trumpet player, a lot of times he wants to work the vowels on that trumpet to try to hit a note that he never hit before. That's right. So you find that trumpet player trying to hit the highest note yeah. that he or she can. Yeah. The trumpet represents a wake up call. That's right. Thank God. That's right. That's what God. Make his preacher, he's a wake-up call. Come to interrupt your sleep. Yeah. 
Cry loud, spare not, lift up your voice at the trumpet. And show my people their transgression. Wait a minute. Yes, You're speaking loudly to do what? And show my people show them. their transgression. Show them. You don't like the fact you wrong? Amen. No, you love the fact you wrong. That's right. And you love it when nobody say nothing. That's right. That's why a lot of you watching me can't stand me. <laughs> That's right. Because what we preaching then hits you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But the Bible says do what? And show my people their transgression. Show them. That's right. Show them. Come on. Amen. 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 Show them. Show my people their transgression. I don't care if you're Hallelujah. white and think that you're a child of God because you white. I don't care if you black and you think God look like you. What do I care? That's right. You was born of a woman like everybody else. That's right. And just like the devil gave you a job to do, Jehovah gave me a job to do. And show my people their transgression. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Show, show my people, my people their transgression. My people. Show them that they're wrong. That's right. For That's saying right. sex marriage. That's right. President Biden, hey Biden, Biden, Biden. Hey man, Miss Harris, Biden, are you say that your faith is what got you through many things in life and undoubtedly it has. Yeah. But when it comes to men loving men and bless God women loving marry loving uh one marry women, your faith have detoured. Oh yes. Oh yes. Because if you truly was a Christ-like president. <laughs> Amen. Amen. When the majority will beg you for same-sex marriage, yeah. Christ within you yes. will say no. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. It's a lie. Amen. They got the right to love like anybody else. That's not love. That's not love. That's right. All right, listen. That's right. The prophet Isaiah say what? And show my people their transgression. Show them. Show them. Show them. Hallelujah. So the Baptist preacher, you can't be a Baptist and get in the kingdom of God. That's right. Show, show my people their transgression. Let you repent of your sins and go down in water Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You ain't never been saved. That's right. Show all my people their transgression. Every woman that claims she's a preacher, she Hallelujah. told a lie on God. That's right. Show all my people their transgression. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Show them. Show my people their transgression. Amen. That is only one in the Godhead. That's right. Show. Show them their transgression. And show uh, them their error. That's right. Show them their mistake. That's right. Show them their sin. That's right. That's right. And that's why you people love these false churches because the false prophet will not show you. Oh no. No, he won't. He paint over it. That's right. Hallelujah. He ignore it. That's right. Why? He looking at the money you gave him. Yes. I don't give two cents what you give. That's right. As long as I'm on good side and good terms with God. Yeah. That's what mattered to me. We'd say to the seers. Not being on a good term with a dollar. No. What good is money if you're going to hell? That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Cry aloud. All of you that are here. Wonderful, brother. You have a God Hallelujah. to stand before. That's right. And God don't care Hallelujah. what you own. That's right. Who cares about your size house? That's right. Who cares about what you drive? Amen. Who cares about what you own? Hallelujah. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Who cares yes. how cute you think you are? That's right. That's right. You don't look that good to keep the worms from crawling on you. That's right. God said, cry aloud. Cry aloud. Spare not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy take off. Cry aloud. Cry aloud. Spare not. Spare not. Don't spare them. That's right. That's right. Now the preacher either preach the word or get out the pulpit. That's right. Spare not. You scared to stand for God? Hallelujah. You scared to correct your house? You scared to correct your wife? Hallelujah. Get out the pulpit. That's right. 
Cry aloud. Cry loud. Spare not. Hallelujah. You bigot Christians. That's right. Who Hallelujah. think if you're white, you're right? Yeah. And you black Christians who think in order to be right with God, all black folks are Jews. Mm. All black folks are devils that don't obey God. That's right. That's right. Amen. I don't care if you got a chain around your neck no. with the so-called star of David. <laughs> that star ain't going to get you in the kingdom. Oh, no, no. We'll take that star and blast it back to hell. That's right. Cry aloud. But even David had to obey God. That's right. If David didn't obey God, David would have went to hell of a truth. Amen. Amen. And when you preach like this, Amen. according to the obedience yeah. of God, yes. 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 you mean that's right. You're arrogant. Arrogant. You're self righteous. <laughs> That's right. You think you're the only one right. That's right. No, I think and know that God is the only one right. That's right. Cry aloud. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can hate me all you want, but before you get into the kingdom of God, you're going to have to be holy. That's it. You can try to dodge this message all you want, but you're going to come back to the Bible. That's right. Let's come on back to the book of Ephesians real quick now. Back in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4. According. According as he hath chosen us in him. Now let's remember God chose us to be in him. That's be, before the foundation before the of the world, world was. That we should be holy. God intents. That's right. God purpose. God's agenda. God's thinking. Yeah. What's for man to be holy? That we should be holy. Now, this is the reason why he wants us to be holy. Now, the he wants us to be holy, mm -hmm. but there's a reason behind it. That's right. Follow me in your Bible. In the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, and we'll start at verse 1. Follow me in your Bible. Leviticus, chapter 19, and we're starting at the very first then verse. Then I want to show them the power of holiness. That's right. How invincible it is. Yes. And what it is. That's right. How it's a protective shield. Yeah. Come on, son. In Leviticus chapter 19 and at verse 1. What is it? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying. The Lord spake unto, as the Arabs call him, Musa. Moses saying. Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel. Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel. And say unto them. Say unto them. Ye shall be holy. For what reason? For I, the Lord your God, am holy. That bring me back to my question. You that brag and say you're Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Pentecostal, non-denominational, Aryan nation, Black Panthers, Ku Klux Klan, Masons, Elks, uh, I don't care what you call yourself, <laughs> Mormons, 5 percenters, no percenters, 2 percenters, 0 percent, <laughs> Muslim, Mormon, yeah. Jehovah Witness, Protestant, yes. Christian science, mm -hmm. polytheist meaning idol worshippers. That's right. Did God at any time uh -huh. told you to be any of this? Any of this. Besides arguing with me and cussing me out, listen to me and follow me. That's right. Did God, Did God. the Father of creation, yes. advise any of you in that's making these claims? Yes. Did he give you permission to be this? That's right. To profess this? Yeah. If he did not, if he did not, where did you get your rights from? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Where did you get your authority from? Yes. You claim to be these religions because your mama is one. Right. You claim to be these religions because your, your father is this. That's right. But your mother is in God. No. And your earthly father is in God. No. In most cases, your father and mother done the best they could do yeah. according to what they knew. That's right. But don't ever fail to realize there is a greater knowledge. That's right. Higher than your father. That's right. Higher than your mother. That's right. For no knowledge in the world can connect you with God better than the knowledge of God himself. That's right. That's right. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, The Lord! The Lord. Glory to you. The Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord. Spake unto Moses, saying, Talk to Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of speak Israel. to all the descendants of Abraham. And say unto them, Say to them, Ye shall be holy. You what? Ye shall be holy. 
You what? Ye shall be holy. What is the reason? For I, the Lord your God, am holy. Amen. Amen. Truly. How many here are Baptists? Raise your hand. Don't be afraid, Angle. I'm not going to hurt you. The word is. The word will. How many here are Catholics? Raise your hand. How many here are non denominational? Pentecostal. Apostolics. Lutheran. Yes. Mormon. Muslim. Hebrew Israelites. Five percenters. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> right Nothing. Are you listening? Amen. What if God says what? Ye shall be holy. For I, the Lord your God, am That's what holy. That's why me stand flat-footed. <laughs> That's right. And blast it to all the powers of the world. That's right. That's right. If God said. That's right. For you to be something. How can you be or show years of loyalty to other things? Amen. Amen. All of you that are watching. And you're not holy. Not holy. I want you to encourage you to go to your pastor. That's right. And ask him, Bishop, why are we, why do we say we're apostolic? Yeah. Amen. Why do we say we're Pentecostal? Yeah. Why do we say we're non-denominational? Why do we say we're Baptist? Right. Where do we trace our origins to? That's right. Who told us to be this? Who was the first Baptist? Who was That's the right. first apostolic? That's Who right. was the first Methodist? Who was the first Pentecostal? Who was the first Catholic? Right. And then when they tell you who it was, ask them to give you a Bible for it. That's right. That's right. Because Jesus said, he that believeth on me. As the scripture has said, yes. no out of his belly shall flow rivers yes. of living water. Yes. What are we doing? We are encouraging the whole world to come back come to back. Bible. That's right. That's right. Come back to the original thing. That's right. They don't need to fight with me, fuss with me, and cuss me out. No. I didn't write it, and I didn't tell you to be holy. No. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying. Geno Jennings said it. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying. Geno Jennings said it. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying. The Lord, the Lord speak. Tino Jennings ain't said nothing. <laughs> That's right. You going to come back with That's the right. word That's and right. do what the word of God said. And any of you that fight it after this, after you this. take your Bibles off the pulpit yeah. and throw it in the trash because you have proven to be an unbeliever. That's right. That's right. That's right. If God said it, God said it. I believe it. Amen. If God said it, I believe it. That's right. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Amen. You mean to tell me your bishop know what's best for you mm. than God? Mm. Well, we got generations of Pentecostals in our family. What do I care? <laughs> That's you right. mean to tell me your generations know what's better for you than God? Than God. I'm going back past generations. That's right. Before there was generations That's and before right. there was creation, there was God. That's right. And the Lord. Come on, back to Bible. Amen. Hallelujah. Go and take God, everybody. Come back. Everybody. Come on back. And the Lord. Come speak. on back. That's right. Who said it? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Ye shall be holy. What is the reason? For I, the Lord your God, am holy. All right? Amen. Genesis 1:27. Yes. All right. He's holy. He's holy. He purposed for man to be holy before the world was. That's right. Now look how he wants to implement Amen. holiness. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. That's what? So God created man in his own image. Hold on! Amen. But what did God say he is? He, ye shall be holy for I the Lord your God am holy. What did God say he is? For I the Lord your God am holy. Back in Leviticus 19 and that verse And two. how did he make man? So God created man in his own image. Oh. And what did God say he is? 
speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel and say unto them, ye shall be holy. You see how the Bible harmonizes? For I, the Lord your God, am holy. God is what? Am holy. God is what? For I, the Lord your God, am holy. And how did he make man? So God created man in his own image. And what? And in the image of God created he him. What? Male and female created what else? he them. So, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Wait a minute. Hmm. So if God, God made man in his own image, in his own image, then it said male and female, and female created he them. Created he them. And God blessed them. Now, the blessings that God gave man, he ordained that man will have a lifestyle. That's right. Now, that's right. God made man in his image. In his own image. Read it, son. So God created man in his own image. Hold it. Let's define that. Yeah. Because most think image is just shape. Right. Form. Fashion. That's right. You can have the shape of a thing and still don't have the image of it. That's right. What do you mean? A homosexual had the shape of a man. Yeah. But he don't have the image of God. Image. That's right. He had the shape that he's a man. Right. But God made man in his image is broader than shape. For within Adam was the character of God. That's right. When God took man from the dust of the ground, he formed man in the same form, same fashion, same shape, same image, in the similitude that will be utilized in the future for redemption. That's right. That's why Adam is the first one to be called son of God. Son of God. Give me the book of Luke quickly Luke. now. That's right. Adam is the first one yeah. to be called son of God. In the book of St. Luke chapter 3 and verse 38. Follow me in your Bible. Luke chapter 3 and verse 38. That's what? Which was the son of Enos. Which was the son of Enos. Which was the son of Seth. Which was the son of Seth. Which was the son of Adam. Son of Adam. Which was the son of God. All right now. The reason why he was called the son of God because there was no earthly father. Right. Truly. That's right. Truly. The only father was the originator of time, God, That's the right. eternal father. That's right. Have we not all one father? Do you hear this in the book of Malachi? In the book of Malachi chapter 2 and at verse 10. Are you 10? getting this? Yes. Amen. Yes. Have we not all one father? Hath not one God, Hath not one God created us? So one God. One God. Not a trinity. That's right. One God. One God. One. Not two. One God. One God created us. Created Adam in his image. That's right. So when he made man from the dust of the ground, yeah. holiness created the shape that would be the sample for sacrifice. Yeah. 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 Adam's first state of being was dead. That's right. So I said, well, wait a minute. The Bible said he became a living soul. Yeah. That's right. That's now right. think closely of what you just quoted. So if he became a living soul, what was he before he became that? In the book of 2 Estrus, chapter 3 and at verse 5. If he had to become a living soul, he was already in another stage. That's right. Before he came alive. That's right. Listen. In the book of 2 Estrus, chapter 3 and at verse 5. And then I want to believe the book of Erasmus. He made Adam without soul. Yes. Quickly now. And gave us a body unto Adam. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Give chapter and verse again. Second Estrus chapter 3 and we're at verse 5. No, first. Uh, hold, hold. Go back to Genesis. Back to Genesis. Let's see when you breathe into Adam. Yeah. And then we go to second Estrus. Yes. I got to make it harmonize. In Genesis chapter 2 and at verse 7. Listen. And the Lord God formed man of the, the dust Lord of the God ground. The Lord God man. Of the dust of the ground. Of the dust of the ground. And breathed into his nostrils. I want you to listen closely. Focus on the language of the book. And Focus on the language of the book. Amen. Focus on the language of the book. And the Lord God formed man of Hold the it. dust of the ground. The first thing that came from the ground was man's form. 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 He formed man from what? Of the dust of the ground. From the material of the ground. That's right. The material of man is dust. That's right. Dust is dirt. Dirt is equal to the dying of grass. It wither. Yes. And soon fade away. That's right. 
So one part of man came from below. That's right. Earth. Listen. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And what? And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The other part of man came from above. That's right. Why? Because life is a gift. That's right. James said every good gift, every perfect gift come from above, come down from the Father of life, right. of whom there is no variables, no shadow of turning. So God first made a form. Right. And then for that form to be activated, breath. Yeah. Which is the spirit that's in man nostrils came into me. Job chapter 27 and at verse 3. Give me the book of Job. Job follow me in the Bible. Job chapter 27 and at verse 3. And what? All the while my breath All is in me. All the while my breath is in me. Is in me. And the spirit of God. And the spirit of God was it located. Is in my nostrils. <laughs> Spirit of God is where? And the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. So I inhale and exhale God. That's right. What do you mean? The presence of God Hallelujah. is the presence of life. That's right. The presence of God is a gift of life. That's why no man can take your life. That's right. Go ahead, brother. So, so wait a minute. He hey, kill God. you. No. God said, I kill. I kill. I make a lie. I make a lie. What do you mean? If God do not intend for you to die. That's right. At that time, they can do whatever they want. That's right. That's right. Daniel was in the lion's den. Wasn't time to die. No. Hebrew brothers was in fire. That's right. Wasn't time to die. That's right. When God says right. it is time to die, yes. He says, I kill. See now that I see look at it, the book of Deuteronomy. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 39. God says, see down that I even I even I am he, am he and there is no God with me. There is no second one. That's right. But what I kill. What? I kill. I kill. And what else I do? And I make alive. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I say, I don't understand, Pastor Jennings. You say, a man really can't take your life? Let me give you understanding. The Bible said, destroy not him. Or rather, don't fear him that can destroy the body afterward. Can't do no more. If you destroy the body, did you destroy the man? Or did you destroy the temple? That's right. In the book that of Saint, the breath of man was in. That's right. In the book of St. Matthew, chapter 10 and verse 28. That's what I mean when I say God. When he say I kill, he can destroy body and soul. And fear and them. Body and soul is destroyed. Hey, brother. That is the complete death. That's right. Of that human being. That's right. For the word of God says, fear not him. And fear not them which kill the body. That kill the body. But are not able to kill the soul. Go ahead. Not, able to, not able to kill the soul. What was breathed into man. But rather fear him which, fear is, him. which is able to destroy both body and soul oh. in hell. He's able to do what? Which is able to destroy both soul body, but and body. Soul and body in hell. That's the true killing. That's the true killing. The true destruction. That's right. Other man. All right, let's go back to Genesis and get Adam. Then we go to Estrus. Back in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. And then after that, go to the book of Ecclesiastes. We'll first see how man arrived, and then we see the separation where man go back. Yes. Are oh, you listening to what I'm telling you? In the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. So when God made man in his image, and God is holy, yeah. God intended for man to be holy and sanctified. That's right. The first state of man, he was dead. Yes. Genesis says what? Genesis chapter uh, 2 and at verse 7. Says what? And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Then what? And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And? And man became a living soul. The form was there before the life was there. That's right. Form first, breath after. That's right. Before the breath came, it was form. Right. With no breath, and if it was form with no breath, his first state was just dead. Dead. Yeah. Why would God create a dead man first, Pastor Jennings? Because Adam's beginning represent your ending. That's right. 
first man dead has to become alive. Right. That shows where we have to go back. That's right. Naturally. That's right. It also shows what God intended. Yes. For the human family. That's right. How they should be in him. Right. But the Bible says he have chosen us in him. Chosen us in him. Amen. Chosen us in him. Amen. So when he made man and man's first stage was just a farm. No breath. So that farm was dead. Showing you God's original purpose for a holy people. How they must be in him. That's right. He said you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. That's right. Wonderful. Wonderful, brother. The true image mm. of God Amen. is bigger than shape. Oh, yes. You must take on God's character. That's right. To take on the characteristics of a thing, you need to be around it. Yeah. You need to be around that's, God. That's right. That's right. To take on God's character. I advise you, hang around God. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Now, here he made Adam and he became a living soul, mean he became a living being. That's right. All right, let's see how he was before he came alive in the book of Esther, second Esther. In the book of second Esther, chapter three, now we're at verse five. And what? And gave us a body unto Adam. He with, gave a body, a body unto Adam. Without soul. Without life. That's right. That's right. Come on, that's right. Body without life. That's right. So the breath came from above, and the man form came from the ground. That's right. So, when you, die, when you die, the same place where your body came from, yes. it goes back. In the book of Ecclesiastes. And the same place where your breath come from, that's where that goes. That's right. There's a separation from breath or spirit that's and right. body of man. That's right. Separation. Yes. Man body, ground. God breathed into him, that breath come from above. That's right. And the same thing happened when you die. In the book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 12 and at verse 7. And what? Then shall the dust return to the earth. Then! Amen. Shall the dust return to the earth as it was. When you, wait a minute. As it what? As it was. As it what? As it was. Amen. And where does the breath go? And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. The spirit is your breath. That's right. It returns to God or go back in the presence of God who did what? Who gave it. Amen. Holiness. Holiness. The intelligence of God, the purpose of God that he instilled in man. That's right. So Adam's first state of being was holy. Holy. That's right. And sanctified. For he was set apart, set aside, to do God's will, do God's agenda, fulfill God's purpose in the Garden of Eden. That's right. To keep man holy and to keep man sanctified, he implemented a holy rule. That's right. A law of sanctification. Yes. Plain and simple. And the Lord God commanded the man. He can give this in here. Now in the book of Genesis chapter 2, we're at verse 16. The Lord God ordered the man. Saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Don't you let every tree of the garden, you can, you can eat that. But of the tree. Listen, here, here, here now. But of the tree. Lord dear God, I want to take you to Bible school tonight. Amen. Of the tree. Tree. tree of the knowledge of the knowledge of good and evil of good and evil. Thou shalt not eat of it. Don't you eat it? For in the day that thou eatest the, the earth, day you eat, thou shalt surely die. All right, let's strip it down and take it apart. Amen. Amen. Touch not the tree. The tree. The tree of the knowledge of good. the tree consists of knowledge of good and evil and evil. And evil. Hold it. Why would a tree, why would the knowledge of good and evil come from a plant? Mm. <laughs> a 
Are y'all listening to what I'm telling you? Why would the knowledge of good and evil come from a plant, first of all, before any tree come into being, it first must begin as a seed. That's right. Knowledge is information that's dropped as a form of plant seed. Before any plant grow, the seed must take root. When knowledge is given, whether that knowledge is good and evil, information must take root. And when it take root, that information begin to grow within him and her and they expand in the knowledge of whatever information they obtain That's right. whether it's good or evil just like it takes water to nurture the roots of a tree meaning the consistency of water it must be the consistency of information That's right. To nurture the heart so they can be emotionally tied to the evil or the, uh, or the knowledge of good and evil. And the mind so they can constantly be thinking about the good and the evil. And when that knowledge grow in him and her, they become more and more good or more and more evil, showing the sprouting. Go ahead, man. Of the information within him and her. And the more information you obtain, the more evil you can perform. That's right. In the book of 2nd Estrus, chapter 8 and at verse 41. 2nd Estrus 8, 41 says, For as the husband man soweth much seed upon the ground. As the husband man, as the farmer. Amen. Plant much seed upon the ground. And planteth many trees. Plant many trees. And yet the thing that is sown good in his season cometh not up. And what? Neither doeth all that is planted take root. Now, evil is like a vine that a woman don't want in her flower garden. That's right. For her to properly expose of that vine, she have to get it by the root. That's right. Sometimes the vine is so wild, she gonna be out there a while. Yeah. Sometimes on her knees. That's right. Showing her zeal. That's right. Her determination That's right. That's right. to pull it out. Yeah. Sometimes to get the vine of evil out of self. That's right. The e internal zeal within one right. will cause them to fall on their knees. Go ahead. Go ahead. So God can pull it out. That's right. Precept. That's right. Upon precept. Right. Line upon line because a lot of the evil come in the form of religious teaching. That's right. And we become ignorantly loyal to it. Yeah. Ignorantly dedicated to it. Yeah. Fighting God and don't even know it. In the book of 2nd Esther chapter so, 7. The knowledge of good and evil comes from a tree, meaning it comes from a source of life. That's right. What kind of tree are you eating from? Hmm. What fruit are you digesting in your church? That's right. What kind of fruit you're eating? Plants that's in your church. Yeah. Were well, they planted by God? The Bible says those plants which my heavenly father has not planted, that my heavenly father have not planted shall be rooted up. What? 
But he answered and said unto them, Listen at this. Listen at this. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 13. Begin at verse 12. At verse 12. Yeah. Then came his disciples and said unto him, uh -huh. Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Jesus, you made them upset. <laughs> That's right. I'm pretty sure there are hundreds now already got the thumbs down on the website. That's right. Upset. Upset. Huh? Knowest thou that the Pharisees were God offended? Noticed thou that the Pharisees were offended? They were upset. After they heard this after saying? After they heard what you said? But he answered and said. But Jesus responded. Every plan. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You couldn't get him to change his stand. No. <laughs> every plan. Every plan which my. That the spirit. Hath not planted. Did not plant. Shall be rooted up. Amen. Hey viewers. Amen. They, listen. Did God plant the Baptist church? Mm. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Because the word of God says. Every plan which my heavenly father hath not planted shall be rooted up. All these man-made religions that God planted. Amen. You non-denominational, you Pentecostal, you Protestant. Amen. I was watching CNN News. They said a woman preacher stuck or start a church, pole dancing church. Wow. Well, you that, get a lot of men in there. That's a lustful church, Pastor. Huh? Amen. I guarantee when that man go there, he said, you know, it's very lovely it's in very this place. Lovely. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Any old piece of trash now is called church. Amen. And any piece of religious garbage people claim it represents Christ. It don't represent Christ. In the book of 2nd Esther, chapter 7 and verse 41. Listen. Even so now. Even so now. Seeing corruption is grown up. What? Corruption is grown up. Corruption is grown up. And wickedness increase. Wickedness increase. And the righteous have prayed for the ungodly. The righteous have prayed for the ungodly. Therefore shall it not be so now also. Now. When you see the wickedness, uh -huh. viewers, just tell me, was your religion the planting of the Lord? That's right. That's right. All right, you say you're apostolic. Did the Lord plant Did the, the Lord. women preachers there? Mm. Oh, no. You say there are a number of apostles now. The planting of the Lord said first in the church apostles. apostles. He planted that. That's right. You say there are not none. When did God root that plant up? That's right. The planting of the Lord says, second in the church, prophet. prophet. He planted that when the Lord pulled that plant out the body. That's right. You said your wife is your assistant pastor when did God plant her in such a position. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You got deaconess. When did God ordain women to be deacons? Amen. We're dealing with the planting of the, the, planting the, Lord. Of the Lord. The planting. You say your organization is the only organization right. When did God plant your organization in the scriptures? That's right. In the book of Isaiah, those plants which my heavenly father has not planted. Yeah, chapter and verse. Back in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 13. What do you 13. mean? The teaching That's it. that God That's it. did not plant That's it. in his church shall be rooted He's up. He's going to send men to plow that to teaching plow That's right. and rip the roots of it to shreds. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. You know, I'm I'm a farmer. Yeah. Riding the tractor of the scripture. <laughs> That's right. Riding through Riding. the field of religion. Riding. Riding. Huh? Riding. 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 The Baptist tells me, don't, don't come over here, don't come over That's here. Right. Riding. That's right. That's right. Amen. Apostolic says, don't, don't you come here, we got it. Riding. Riding. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Riding over the clansmen, ripping your sheets and your hood. That's right. Riding over the black pastors while you got your fist in the air. That's right. Riding over the Aryan nation while you got the swastika on your arm. Every place. Hallelujah. Go ahead, take Hallelujah. Off. Everyone. Every place. Every place. Which my heavenly father has my not planted. Heavenly father has not planted. Didn't plant. Shall be rooted up. Who plants you, hypocrite? Amen. You religion that got snakes, 
And you're ignorant, took the scripture that if you take up any serpent, it won't hurt you. And you think that means to take snakes up in the mountains of West Virginia and dance around with them. And then you get beaten and die and go to hell. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That don't mean that you fool. Fool. That's right. That's not the planting of the Lord. No way. God don't plant dumb fruit. That's right. God don't plant. Let here. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> All right, yeah, they real. Amen. I got to check it out. Now. All right, they real. This is a real plan here. This is like what the planting of the Lord of the is. Lord. Yeah. But now you got fake plants. That's right. Feel like this. They even give it an artificial scent. That's right. What do the Bible call it? Solomon said, having a form, a form of, of godliness, a form of church. That's right. But deny the power thereof. Someone said, well, Pastor Jenner, we don't deny the power thereof. We believe in the Holy Ghost. That's just that one of the acts of the power. That's right. That's right. You can have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue and still deny the power thereof. That's right. Because when you deny what the Word of God says, you deny the power thereof. That's right. That's right. That's Having right. the Holy Ghost is not enough. No. You can speak in tongue until you fall out, roll through the church, and knock everybody over like a, like a bowling ball. <laughs> Amen. And the pins fall. Yeah. If you fight one thing in the Bible, you deny the power oh, thereof, right. meaning you reject the counsel of God against yourself. That's right. Every plan which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. That's why your second wife got to leave. Yes. Yes, sir. That's why your second husband got to leave. That's right. Hypocrite. That's right. Every plant. That's, that's a plant that God didn't plant. That's, right. that's a plant your Pentecostal church said you can have. Your apostolic church said you can have. Your non-denominational church you can, said you can have. You got your Baptist farmer who claimed he's a preacher up there telling the church God spoke to me and told me that my wife is sick and she can't take care of me. So therefore, right. he had looked at Sister Grethel and said, Sister Grethel, God spoke to me and told me to tell you that you're my wife. And then Sister Grethel, another phony plant, get happy and right. say he call up a shot. That's right. Every plan. Amen. 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 goes for if I got any men up here. That's right. Yes, sir. Amen. That's right. You got your second wife. You can't be a part of the truth of God as long as you're with that second wife. No way. I don't care if you speak more than all the Corinthian church. That's right. That's a plant there that God didn't plant. That's right. Every plant. How much? Every plant. Which my heavenly father has not planned. The whole wedding ceremony is not the planning of the Lord. That's right. Your wife ain't dead yet. That's right. That goes for you out there. Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor Jennings. Technically, key, technically, my, my, my wife, she's not dead, you're true, but she is dying. She ain't dead. Dead. Amen. Pastor Jennings, you, Pastor Jennings, you're correct. I, I go to the hospital on every Wednesday, and I look at my wife, and she's on the machine, and the respirator's still functioning. Still functioning. And I look at the little beep, the it's going beep, beep, beep. And That's I told, right. I told my wife that, well, we, we give the machine some time to shut down. That's right. Hey, Jack, is she dead? That's no. It. No. And no. that's not the planting of the Lord. Not the planting of the Lord. Hear this, viewers. I know you upset now, you bunch of heathens. <laughs> that's right. This is it right here. But he answered and said, every plan. Every teaching. Which my heavenly father has that not did planned. not come from the word. Shall be rooted up. We're going to break it up. Break it up. We're going to break up your white Jesus. We're going to break up your black Jesus. That's right. We're going to break up your yellow Jesus and your brown Jesus. That's right. We're going to break up your Christmas. We're going to break up your Easter. Every plan. Hallelujah. The Hebrew Israelites now yelling about me all over social media. Pastor Jennings don't believe God is black. You're right, I don't. No. I believe God is a spirit. God is a spirit. 
That's it. Well, what color do you believe he is? I don't know what color oh, no. he is. Well, uh, Revelation told us his color. Give me Revelation, Revelation first chapter. Let me strip that apart. Yeah. Just in case I got any undercover Hebrew Israelites that's scared to open their mouth. Yes. Revelation chapter 1 will start at verse 12. Amen. This is not the blackness of God. This is the function of holiness right here. That's right. And I'm going I'm to take it apart here. That's right. What God, uh, how the apostle saw the Lord. Yeah. And it is not the Lord's complexion. That's right. It's the Lord's function. That's right. You just couldn't see that, but I'm going to take it apart. Amen. Amen. Listen at this. Revelation chapter 1, we'll start at verse 12. All right. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, being I, saw turned se I saw seven golden candlesticks. The seven golden candlesticks representing the seven churches of Asia. It wasn't just called a candlestick, but it was called golden, golden candlesticks. candlestick. Letting you know the church is precious. Now the power of a candlestick is the flame of that candlestick. Right. And if there's no flame on that candlestick, that means there's no light there. That's so right. if it's the seven churches of Asia, and there's no light in that church, there's no flame in that church, there's no power in that church. God is not in that church because John said, one come after me that's mightier than I who shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and that with the fire because the fan is in his hand and he shall thoroughly purge his floor. Hold, right. right Hold it right there. Hold it right there. Right there. Now, when the Bible said the fan is in his hand and he shall thoroughly purge his floor, this is what you apostolics taught. And this is what you Pentecostals taught. That when the Bible said you shall thoroughly purge his floor, you taught that when the people was on their knees saying Jesus, 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 and spitting all in the mouth, that's God purging you, you fool. That's right. They ain't purge, you ain't nothing but slobs. That's right. That's right. Purge me to clean. 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 Bible says you're clean through the word that I speak unto you. That's right. What if God says sin, you have purified, 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 purge your soul. In How is it done? In obeying the truth. In spitting. In obeying the truth. In spitting. In obeying the truth. So when you down there, <laughs> <laughs> Spit just hanging. Spit hanging. And then the preacher say, don't wipe it. Yes. He's purging. He's slobbing. That's right. That's right. That spit ain't clean. No. It's common for your saliva glands to overreact when your mouth is constantly in motion. That's right. That's right. If you are purging, why you get mad when someone spit in your face? Bible said they spat on Jesus. That's right. It ain't said they purged on him. No way. Thoroughly purge his floor. Two words I want you to recognize. Purge, purge. and floor. And floor. <laughs> what is the floor? It ain't what your feet is on. No. Thoroughly purge his floor. Floor represents that which is beneath. That's right. Who is beneath God? We are. We are. We are the floor. That's right. The Bible says heaven is a throne and earth, earth is footstool. a footstool. 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 Hallelujah. Are you listening? That's right. Thoroughly purge Church. its floor. It's floor. Thoroughly clean them. That's right. That is not equal to him. That's right. Wonderful. Thoroughly purge its floor. Dirty clean them that are lowly. That's right. Meek That's right. under the feet of the most high. That's right. That don't mean spitting on the floor of your church. No. Amen. And these folks leave a puddle of slob. <laughs> That's right. See, it's the evidence God was there. Yeah. I came out the same thing. I remember when I was a kid praying for the Holy Ghost and I thought man everybody else spitting and I'm like and I'm like wait a minute I, I couldn't muster up enough spit so <laughs> I kid you not I was on my knees and I specifically remember I'm looking at these folks calling on the Lord and slobber hanging from their mouth. As a child, I remember. I was like, I ain't, I ain't got enough spit. I remember just leaning up to the chair and just. <laughs> Listen, I was going to work that thing out. 
And then when I worked out enough spit so it could hang from my mouth, I was looking around just saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You know I was a fool. <laughs> didn't, didn't know any better. Come on, Your spit ain't got nothing to do with the Holy Ghost. No, no way. God need to clear your dirty, clean your dirty heart. That's right. Purification is it. of a necessity. That's right. Thoroughly purge his floor, mean thoroughly clean his people. The, people. the fan is in his hand, what does a fan do? Bring wind. wind. The fan is in his hand, mean his power is in his hand. That's right. What's the result of a fan? Wind. wind. What is his wind? It came from heaven. heaven. On the day of Pentecost, at the sign of a Russian mighty, mighty wind. wind. You see, they, they read this stuff, but they can't analyze can this analyze stuff. It. They take things literally. That's right. Listen. Back in Revelation 1 and verse 12. Let's break down what God looked like. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Seven golden candlesticks represent the seven churches of Asia. All right. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. One what? One like unto the Son of Man. One like unto the Son of Man. Notice what it says, like. Like. He came from the house of David, from the tribe of Judas, from the generations of Shem, the brother of Ham and Japheth, Noah's sons. Who did? The son of man. He was born of a woman. Consists of flesh and blood. That's right. The Bible said, had not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David out of the town of Bethlehem where David was. He was the son of God according to the flesh. First chapter of the book of Romans, begin at verse 1. Quickly now. Romans chapter 1. The apostle Paul went down to Galatians and said, even so we was chosen in bondage under the elements of the world. When the fullness of time was come, God sent forth the son made of a woman. Made under the law to redeem him that was under the law. That we may receive the adoption of sons. sons. And the first chapter of the book of Romans begin at verse 3. Curse concerning his son. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, that was of the seed of David. Which was concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our Lord. Which was made of wait, the seed. Wait, wait, wait. He was what? Which was made. He was what? Which was made. Something about Jesus was made and something about Jesus always was. That's right. Amen. The spirit of him always was, but the body of him had to be made. Which was made. Where was it made at? Of the seed of David. According to what? According to the flesh. According to what? According to the flesh. He was of the seed of David according to what? According to the flesh. And that flesh didn't come from heaven. It came from David's seed, and David never was in heaven. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. So after he made that flesh and blood, then he took it on. Someone said God became a man. That's one of the biggest lies you ever told. No. God ain't never became a man. No. Someone said, but the word was made flesh. <laughs> How can the word be made? No. It says the word made flesh. The word wasn't made. No. When did the word made flesh? Word means speech. Yeah. That's right. He spoke flesh into That's being. Right. That's right. The Bible says in the book of John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God. That don't mean another God was with him. When the Bible said the word was with God, they let you know he's a God of his word. That's right. But then they come back and say, And the, the word, word was God. Wait a minute. The same thing that was with him was him. And the word was God. Get, read the whole verse. St. John chapter 1 and verse 1. Tell you what. In the beginning was. Hold it. In the beginning. <laughs> in what? In the beginning. What was it? Was the word. In the beginning was speech. That's right. That's all it was. That's right. What you mean, Pastor Jennings? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He spoke and brought the non-existence into existence and brought the invisible and made it visible. That's right. He being the invisible created the visible. Yes. Are you getting me? That's right. He being the invisible created the visible. That's right. And then the invisible put on what was visible. Yeah. And the invisible demonstrated his will in the visible. That's right. The visible died and the invisible came out. That's right. It went to the lower parts of the yes, earth. That's right. I'm just talking about spirit and flesh. And flesh. Human and divine. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? In the beginning was the, the beginning. word. The word introduced the beginning. That's right. The word introduced time. That's right. Because when the beginning start, time was activated. That's right. Because God is eternal and there is no time attached to eternity. That's right. All right. In the beginning was the word. Was word. And the word. And the word. Was with God. That's where you fools say that means there was another God with him. It ain't say that. No. There was no another God with There's him. No other God with and him. Deuteronomy 32, 39 speaks plain. That's right. Because it said the word was with. Was with God. The word was with. And then Moses 
Moses spoke plain in Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 32, 32 and verse 39. And verse 39. See now that I, even I, am he. See now God talking. See now that I, even I am he. And there is no God with me. There is no God what? There is no God with me. So what did he say in the book of St. John? And the word was with God. And what did Deuteronomy say? And there is no God with me. St. John. And the word was with God. Deuteronomy. There, and there is no God with me. St. John. And the word was with God. Deuteronomy. And there is no God with me. Hallelujah. One book says, no God with them. Another book says, word with God. With God. Now watch John go on and clear it up and tell us what the word was. And the word was God. He was with himself. That's right. <laughs> Wonderful, brother. Amen. They say, well, the Bible says the word was made flesh. I agree. But it doesn't mean that God became flesh. No. The word made flesh. How did it do it? He spoke the flesh into existence. Existence. You can hear the word speaking flesh. Yeah. Look at him moving, prop, moving on prophets to prophesy. That's right. Under us a child is born. Word talking. Right. Son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. The name shall be called wonderful counsel of the mighty God. Everlasting father, the prince of peace, of the increase of his government of peace, there shall be no end. What happened? The word. That's right. Getting flesh prepared to be made. Right. Sacrificing an offering that what is not but a body. That's how prepared. Word. Yeah. Making flesh. The yeah. Lord said unto my Lord, do out one of those deep statements. Yes. Sit down on my right hand until I make that in thy footstool. Right then a fool who said, the Lord and my Lord. That's two, you fool. The Bible said, here is the Lord. Our God is one. One. When it said the Lord, the Bible said, know you the Lord, that he is God. That's when it said my Lord, that means my son. So the Lord was in my Lord. That's right. What do you mean? The Lord of heaven and earth was in my Lord, that flesh that came out the house of David. That's right. <laughs> That body had the title Lord, yeah. and the spirit had the title Lord, right. and the body got the title from the spirit. From the spirit. Give me a Bible for that, Pastor Jenna. Jesus said, all things that the Father had are mine. Are mine. Are mine. All of it. All of it. Glory yeah. to God. Glory to God. That's right. Huh? And the word was made flesh. So what? Can you hear this? In St. John chapter 1 and verse 14. Well, that means God became a man. No, it doesn't mean that. Let me make it more plain. 1 Timothy 3, 16. Mm, 1 Timothy a, chapter 3, verse 16. A very familiar scripture that folks quoted, but didn't give me. Give me uh, 1 Timothy 3, 16 and give me Philippians, the second chapter. Yes. First Amen. I want you to follow me and I want to itemize this and focus on the language of the Bible. Get this. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. What is it? And without controversy. Shut your mouth up. Great. Shut your mouth up. That's right. Without yes, controversy. Shut your mouth up. That's right. I'll stop all this talking if you don't know what you're talking about. Leave it alone. That's right. You got men all over the air, all over social media trying to talk about God and just butchering it. Butchering it. Make a mess. The Bible says what? And without controversy. Shut up! That's right. Tell your bishop to just go somewhere and shut up. That's right. Amen. When he said Jesus is a God and the Father is a God, do what? Without controversy. Shut up! That's right. Don't even argue about it, Pastor. Ain't no need to no get all that talking. Just yeah, shut your mouth yeah, up. Ain't no need for Without controversy, what is it? Great is the mystery of God. A mystery is something everybody don't know. That's right. A mystery is not ordinary. It's extraordinary. That's right. What was it? God was manifest in the flesh. That's what it means, that the word was made was flesh. Made, was made flesh. God was manifested. When the thing is manifested, it's heard. That's right. It's seen. God manifests his will. God manifests his Hallelujah. name. God manifests his power. God manifests his teaching. That's right. God manifests his healing. God manifests his purpose. God manifests his agenda. That's right. God manifests his authority. Where? God was manifest in the flesh. He did it what? In the flesh. He manifests his name where? In the flesh. His authority where? In the flesh. His title where? In the flesh. His power where? In the flesh. His teaching where? In the flesh. His preaching where? In the flesh. His gospel where? In the flesh. His doctrine where? In the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. He didn't say God was flesh. No. He was manifest in it. In the flesh. And while he was in that flesh, what happened? Justified in the spirit. Where did God the spirit justified with the flesh done? Seen of angels. The, the angels got glad about it. Preached unto the Gentiles. And the apostles preaching to the Gentiles. And then after they preached it, what was the result? Believed on in the world. And what? Received up into glory. Where did God he, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Went on to glory. Now in Philippians chapter and 2. Philippians chapter 2. And at verse 6. What did he do with that flesh? Who being in the form of God. Wait a minute. God's form was God's shape. God's Hallelujah. shape was God's fashion. God's fashion was God's figure. God's 
figure was God's image, and God's image was the lamb or the sacrifice set aside to redeem us. That's that right. lamb was called the son. That That's lamb right. was called a prophet. That lamb was called an apostle. Right. That lamb was called a minister. That lamb was called a servant. That's right. That lamb represents the church because with many members, but one body. That's right. Go ahead, brother. What did he say? Who being in the form of God. He was in a form. Form. Who being in the form? Who being in the form of God? Being in the form of God. So they're not robbery to be equal with God. And for you to be equal to God, you got to be God because God said, "Who is my equal?" That's right. Say of the Holy One, holy God one. say, "Who would you liken me unto?" So they're not robbery to be equal with Who God. Who would you liken me unto? That's right. Jesus Christ was God. That's right. Not His flesh. That's right. But the Spirit of Christ that was in the prophets that was God. But made Himself of no reputation. Didn't make Himself of no reputation. And took upon him the form of a servant. Oh, that form he used to serve. That's right. And what? And was made. That goes to show you that flesh was not God because God ain't me. That's right. Anytime you are made, there's a power higher than you. That's right. The spirit was higher though greater than the flesh. And was made, made. in the likeness of men. In the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man. What did the flesh do? He humbled himself. What do we got to do? And became obedient. What do we got to do? He humbled himself. That's what we got to do. That's right. That's right. The flesh was our example. That's right. You see, none of the prophets can leave a better example than Jesus could leave. No, no. None of them. None of them. So God was manifesting the flesh, and then that flesh was a pattern. That's right. A pattern, an example of good works, because no one can show you how to please God better than God. That's right. So God took on flesh and left a holy example, a sanctified example. When men try to show you, they will fail. They will slip up. They will error. Error. They will come short. So that's why God did it himself. That's right. Because it's, that way, nothing about the Son of man will come short. That's right. Mm. To let you know, you got the you got us, you got an example yeah. to live up to. For even here unto were ye called. Uh oh. Did in first Peter chapter two and verse twenty one. Even here unto were ye called. Because Christ also suffered for us. What? Leaving us an example. What did he do? That leaving us an example. Why? That ye should follow his steps. Yeah. Amen. He washed feet. Mm. And then say ye ought, ought to wash. When these false prophets say you ain't got to wash feet, you're a liar. Jesus said you ought to do it. That's right. And if Jesus said you ought to wash one another's one feet, another he didn't say you ought to wash each other. One another. He said you ought to wash one another. One another. Yeah. You see, one another feet and each other feet is two different things. Yeah. When you wash one another feet, I wash Jones, Jones wash Harris, Harris wash hair, hair wash that brother. But when you wash, that's, that's washing one another feet. Right. But when you wash each other, I wash Jones and Jones wash mine. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's right. If I then your Lord and Master. You better get Bible for this. St. John chapter 13 and we're at verse 14. If I then be your Lord. And Master. And your ruler. Have washed your feet. And have washed your feet. You also ought to wash one another's feet. You just said you ought to do it. Shut your mouth and do it. For I have given you an example. Wait a minute. Why did he do it? I have given you an example. He's not in the church now. I have given you an example. No, it's not in the church now. We ain't got to do it. That's one of those plants that was taken out. I have given you an example. You don't believe in washing feet? You don't? Oh, yes, so you're don't. trying to tell me what Jesus said ought to do, you ain't got to do. I have given you an example. Why do we got to do it? That ye should do as I have done to you. If he said you should do it, shut your mouth and sit down and sit get down. busy. That's right. All right, preachers. Now that mean this, preacher, 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 that mean this. Please explain to me. If one of the mothers is not able to come to church, how is it you can go to her house, just you and her, and serve the Lord's Supper and wash her feet? Mm. Amen. How can a preacher serve the Lord's Supper and wash her feet? Right. Who going to wash your feet, preacher? That's right. That's right. The Lord said, If I then your Lord and master, I be your Lord and master, have washed your feet, ye, ought, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. They got to be an exchange. That's right. They got to be more than one there to do one another. One, that's not right. Not each other. That's right. One another. Ye also each other. Not one another. That's if right. Me, if I, if Byron is at one of the ministers, and I send Byron to uh, Mother Huckabuck house, <laughs> someone say, Who's Huckabuck? I don't know. <laughs> I said, by Byron, you go on to Mother Huckabuck. He said, well, Pastor Jenny, she wants the Lord's Supper. What I look like is over here. Well, you go on to serve it and wash her feet. Mm. Right. Now, wait a minute. Yeah. Who's going to wash Byron's feet? That's right. That's right. Who's going to break bread and serve it to him? Yeah. 
Amen. Someone said, well, he ain't got to take it. The Bible said plainly about Jesus after he had supped. After he had supped. He took it. That's right. Then gave he to his yeah. disciples. Disciples. You see how this thing got to be done right? That's right. Not a tray of glasses, you old licking, loving, shot glassing folk. You got to have one cup one because cup. that's all Jesus had because it represent one body. One body. Oh, wait a minute, Pastor Jenner. These are modern times. These are modern times, and their germs was more germs back then than it is now. That's right. Amen. You can't look at it from a kernel perspective. You got to look at what that wine represent. That's right. Wine represent that blood. Blood. And that's where the New Testament was. That's right. Before the New Testament was ink and paper, it was in liquid form. This cup. And it was stored in the body of the Son of Man. That's right. Give me 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and at verse 25. Give chapter and verse again. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and Let me show you where the 25. New Testament was before it got written. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 25. That's what? After the same manner also, he took the cup. And what? When he had supped. When he had supped. Saying this cup. This cup. Is the New Testament. This cup. This cup. Is the New Testament, where is it? In my blood. Where's the New Testament at? In my blood. Where's the New Testament at? In my blood. That's why when they pressed him in the side, out came blood and water, the New Testament ran out. That's right. That's right. In order for the testament to have effect, the testator had to die. That's right. When the testator died, he gave the scriptures power. Power. Who were to God that it didn't have. That's right. Until the testator the died. died. Go back to the book of Ephesians chapter 1, begin at verse 4 quickly, son. Back in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4. Holiness. A according as he hath chosen us in him. This is what God purposed for you, viewer, That's and right. you that are here. That's right. He never purposed for you to be anything else, so stop telling me what it is. Amen. Pastor Jennings, is you holy? Well, no, then stop being it. <laughs> That's right. Plain and simple. Pastor Jennings, I was praying to for 30 years. You waste 30 years. That's right. Amen. Well, Pastor Jennings, I'm an apostolic preacher. I'm happy for you. Happy for you. Now show me in the Bible where God is an apostolic preacher, then I'll be one. That's right. Well, the apostles was apostolic. Read it where it says that. It says that. Apostolic came from the word apostle. That's nice. Just show me where God said it, though. That's right. I I'm happy about your explanation. I just won Bible. <laughs> Amen. That's like seven day Adventists came from them that misused the first chapter of the book of Genesis. Right. They the rest on the seventh day. And before you know it, seven day Adventists. That's right. Baptists, they hijacked John the Baptist's occupation, who was a baptizer. And they went around saying, oh, I'm Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. They hijacked Pentecostal because there was a symbol on the day of Pentecost. And on the day of Pentecost was not the starting of the Pentecostal church. Pentecost means to eat. It was the feast, a high feast of the Passover that the Jews had. That's right. Who told you to be what you are? Come on, come on now. Come on. Don't get mad at me because we are plowing up your religion with Bible. That's right. You got to plant that Jesus didn't plant. That's right. My job is to root it up. Root it up. Every plant. How many plants? Every plant. Every plan. You can stand in front of your religion all you want, but I'm, proud, right. I'm, I, I, I'm on the track. I'm on the track. That's right. I'm riding the track, and you can stay right there. That's I'm right. I'm going to ride right over you. That's right. Over your church. A amen. And your overseer. Amen. Every plan which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. Every plan. You show me that God told you to be anything else yeah. other than holy. Other Just show it to me, then I'll become it. That's right. So will I, Pastor. You'll become it? Oh, yes. Good man. Amen. Amen. Just show me where God told you to be anything else than holy. Than holy. Amen. The religion of men, the ideology of men, the philosophy of men, the theory of men yeah. have formulated religion to oppose the infallibleness of God. That's right. That's exactly why men went in religious business to oppose. Yeah. God says a shame to, uh, for a man to have long hair. Man joins some religion and says, let your hair grow long. Let it flow. <laughs> let it flow. <laughs> <laughs> man got a man bun, man got a ponytail. You look at him walking up the street, you think is a woman. That's right. Amen. That's yeah, right. The Bible says God made the woman for the man, mm -hmm. and now the woman want to walk like a man. Yeah. That's right. Speak to a woman. How you doing, sister? What's up? <laughs> That's right. Got bass in her voice. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. 
<laughs> Amen. So they love these cheap religions love it. that give you freedom of sin. That's right. That's why you like it. That's right. That's right. If holiness, you better go back to the book of Revelation. I got to finish that up. Yeah. I mean, what God looked like. I got to finish that up. What just came to my mind. Back in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 13. I want to crush the black theory. That's right. That's all it is, is a black theory. Amen. That goes for you white brothers and sisters, too, that got all this little white Jesus in your house, a blind hair, blue-eyed hippie from Woodstock who played the guitar with Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the beach boys in your living room. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Huh? That's right. Not that one of the Beach Boys the Beach or one Beach of the Boys. Beatles. <laughs> Got John Lennon in your living room That's pretending right. that he's Jesus. Amen. And before you start your day, you walk around the kitchen with your coffee, and that picture just... <laughs> That picture in your bedroom or in your living room or around your kitchen, and you look at it like a fool. Like a fool. <laughs> Talking to the picture with your cup of Maxwell House. <laughs> That's right. Looking at the picture. Good morning, Jesus. That's right. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus, listen. I, I hope you give me a good day. Just talking to the picture like a fool. That's right. Jesus, I hope you give me a good day today. Me and my boss, oh, my job last week, Jesus. Jesus, would you please help me today? <laughs> That's right. And then when, when he or she can really leave, they may kiss the hand and kiss the picture. All right, Jesus, I'll see you when you get back. That's right. That's right. Now you let that picture say, all right. I guarantee you won't come back in your house. No. That little white Jesus is no more your savior than your little black one. Amen. Get that idolatry, idolatry. trash out your house. That's right. That goes for any of you here that got a cross around your neck with an image on it. Ain't nothing wrong with a cross, but when you got an image on it, who told you Jesus looked like that? Look like that. Get that religious trash off your neck. Get it out your church. That's right. Amen. Amen. God preaches kill polytheism. That's right. Eh? Oh, yes. What is it? Back in Revelation 1 and verse 13. Follow me and get me. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son one of Man. One like unto the Son of Man. Clothed. The same shape, same form, same fashion. Yes. That he had when he was here on earth, but he didn't have the same nature. That's right. Here on earth, he was flesh and blood. In heaven, that's a glorified body or eternal. Eternal. It's a body, but it's glorified. That's right. Meaning it's spiritual. That's right. No longer the natural. Yes. All right. Clothed with with a garment down to the foot. And what did he do? And gird about the paps with a golden girdle. Yes. His head. His head. And his hair. And his hair. Were white like wool. White as what? As white as snow. All right, you black brothers and sisters, you said the Bible said he had woolly hair. It ain't said that. Go back and read it right. His head right. and his hairs were white like wool. No, he had woolly hair. Were white like wool. Oh. Amen. It compared the color of his hair, not the texture. No. Look at what it compared the color to. His head and his hairs were white like wool wool, as, wool is one texture. As white as snow. Snow was another texture. That's right. It compared the color, the whiteness of his hair, to the whiteness of wool and to the whiteness of snow. That's right. Not the texture, color. Color. Amen. Wonderful. Amen. Wonderful. Amen. What else? And it's whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's break down what wool is. Fifty third chapter of the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter fifty three. We'll start at verse six. And in the book of Judges, there was a man named Gideon. Blessed be the name of God. And God told him to separate an X amount of men. Whoever drank water, lap a dog, and looked to the left and looked to the right. Gideon had too many to go to battle. Yeah. yeah. Amen. And God dwindled them down. That's right. Amen. Uh, and then Gideon used a excellent example. He used a fleece. Fleece. Laid the fleece out and wanted to know, Lord, if you're going to give me this. I want this fleece dry and around it wet with dew. He came and it was so, and then Gideon reversed it. I want the fleece wet and I want to around it dry. He came back and it was so. God established his prayer twice because out of the mouth of two or three witnesses to let every word be established. So God established that uh, Gideon would have the battle. That's right. So here you had a fleece now. And the Bible says what? In Isaiah 53. The hairs of his head. His head and white, his hairs. Like wool. As white, white as snow. White is snow. You know wool is the covering of a lamb. That's right. And the 53rd chapter of the book of Isaiah says what? All we like sheep have gone astray. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. Then what? And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Focus on the language of the Bible. God laid upon him. That means the spirit laid upon the lamb. The spirit laid upon the son of God. God laid upon the son of God or the spirit laid upon the flesh the sins of us all. He was oppressed. He was oppressed. And he was afflicted. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. But he didn't talk back. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. Oh. Amen. 
Amen. He is brought as a lamb. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And what? And as a sheep before his shearers is dumb. He is brought as a lamb to his murderers. That's right. You know, when you kill a lamb, you murder it. Murder it. The Bible says they have murdered, they killed the Kill. prince of life. That's right. Amen. And as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep, what? And as a sheep before a shearer is know, dumb. Wait, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it now, hold it now, hold it now, hold it now, hold it now. You know, when a sheep about to be sheared, yeah. the wool is about to be removed. That's right. That's what happened on the cross. That's right. The sheep was sheared. Sheared. The spirit removed the wool off of itself. That's right. Because the spirit was in that body. Give me Isaiah 45, 15, quickly yeah. now. Yeah. Give me Isaiah 45, 15. Isaiah I want to tell you where God. I want to tell you where God was located. That's right. Listen at this now. Isaiah 45, Isaiah 45 15. Isaiah 45 and verse 15. What did it say, son? Verily, verily, thou art a God. Thou art a God. That hideth thyself. He do what? Hideth thyself. He hid himself in the lamb. He hid himself in the wool. He hid himself in the sun. He hid himself in the body. So the sheep wool had to be sheared, mean removed. So the spirit stepped out the body, came out the lamb, the shepherd. That's right. Left the lamb. That's right. Left the lamb there on the cross yes. and went to the lower parts of the earth and stayed there three days and three nights preaching to the spirits that was in prison. Well, Pastor Jennings, why couldn't he use the body to preach to the spirits? Because the body can only be in one place at a time. But the spirit can be everywhere because when he preached to the spirits that was in prison, that started from the death of Adam That's up right. to then. That's right. Hallelujah. The flesh was local. Yes, sir. The spirit was universal. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. All right. His hand and his hairs were white like wool. White as, as what? As white as snow. That means the sacrifice. That's right. When they offered up their body once for all through the eternal spirit, they offered up the lamb, they offered up the flesh, they offered up the son of God who atoned for our sins right here on earth. On earth. What else? And his eyes were as a flame of fire. His eyes was what? Were as a flame of fire. His eyes was compared. That's right. To the flame of fire. All right, Jesus said, if I tell you earthly things, you don't get it. How can I tell you heavenly? Let's analyze fire. Let's analyze fire. That's right. Then you will understand what you get from his eyes. That's right. Now do you understand? Let's look at fire from a natural perspective. If you got a nice, good fireplace, it's comfortable. Make you sleepy, too. Make you good and drowsy. But if the fire go beyond the fireplace, that's right. Start burning down the walls. And you start running. That's now right. the characteristics of the fire change. Yeah. It goes from being a comforter yeah. to consuming. Consumer. His eyes. His eyes were as a flame of fire. That's what God is. Give, yeah. give chapter and verse again. Uh, in Revelation chapter one and verse fourteen. His eyes. And his are eyes as. were as a flame of fire. From God, you be comforted, yeah. and that same God. Come to consume come you. To consume. He said the comforter will come. That's right. That's the Holy Ghost. That's right. He comforts you. He keeps you. When you don't have no one to console with, no one to talk to. Spirit, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 God, the Spirit of God step in. Comfort you. Comfort you. Comfort your heart. That same thing that comforts your heart come to consume your will. That's right. Burn out everything in you that's not like him. That's right. For he's a comforter. And a consumer. consumer. You know, you can look at a person's eyes and tell whether they love you or hate you. Oh, yeah. For your eyes are the light of your body. That's right. You can look at a person's eyes and tell whether they welcome you or whether they want to keep you away. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm telling you? And his eyes. Eyes. Were eyes a flame of fire. As a flame of fire. That's right. What else? And his feet. Wait a minute. His feet what? Like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. Feet like fine brass. That's right. Brass means he's a deliverer. Yeah. Now, fine brass. Fine brass. Feet is like fine brass. You know, to be delivered, you must be taken from. That's right. So you got to take a journey. Yeah. Amen. That's why his feet is like fine brass. Yes. In the book of Numbers, Israel rose up against Moses. Yes. And spoke against Moses. And God sent fiery serpents upon them. That's right. Then God instructed them. Make me a make, fiery serpent. Listen at this in the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 21 and at verse 8. Make a fiery serpent. And set it up upon a pole. Put it on a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten when he looketh upon it shall live. Yeah. And Moses made a serpent of brass. Moses made a serpent of brass. And put it up upon a pole. Put it up on a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man. And what? When he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Oh, wait a minute. All right. Come in. They was bitten by a serpent. That's right. Then they was told to make a serpent from brass, a brazen serpent. Yeah. Now, in the natural, if you get bit by a snake that had venom, what do they do? 
They get venom. Get venom. To fight the venom in you. That's right. They was bitten by a serpent. That's right. And then they had to make a brazen serpent. Brazen serpent. And put it on a pole. And whoever looked at the serpent would be delivered from the bite. That's right. Jesus come along later. Yes. And said, as Moses. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in, in the oh, wilderness. Oh, take off. In St. John chapter 3 and verse 14. And Moses. Lifted up the serpent up in the, the wilderness. Serpent in the wilderness. Even so must the, Even son, so of must man the son of man be lifted up. Be lifted up. Be lifted so up. all of us was bitten by the serpent. That's right. That's why we was conceived in lust. Yeah. And formed in iniquity. Yes. Amen. And we was bitten by the serpent. So now here comes Jesus. That's right. You need spirit to fight spirit. That's right. That's you right. need the power of God to fight the devil. That's right. So that's like they looked at the serpent and was delivered from the bite. You got to look under Jesus to be delivered from the enemy. That's right. Back in the book of Revelation, quick, so I can knock off. Back in Revelation 1 and verse 15. What is it? And his feet like unto fine brass as if they burn in a furnace. What else? And his voice is the sound of many waters. Oh. His voice is the sound of many waters, meaning he speaks with authority. He's troublesome to you. That's right. And, and he had in his right hand seven stars. Hold it. He had in his right hand what? Seven stars. The seven stars were located where? And he had in his right hand. His what? His right hand. Now hold it right there. Hold it right there. The seven stars represent the seven angels yeah. that were sent to the seven churches of Asia right. in the natural. The star reflect the sun at night. You don't see the sun. No. But the stars of heaven reflect the light of the sun. That's right. Amen. You don't see God. No. But uh, the preacher is supposed to reflect the light of God, which is the wisdom of God and the knowledge of God That's in right. the midst of darkness. That's right. What is the darkness? The wickedness of the world. That's right. Amen. Are you getting what I'm telling you? And he had in his right hand seven Let's stars. Let's see what right hand means. Exodus chapter 15, now we're at verse 6. What? Thy right hand, O Lord. Glory to God. Thy right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. That doesn't mean literally. No. Speaking in symbolic terms. That's right. Thy right hand, O Lord, become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord. Thy right hand, O Lord. Has dashed in pieces the mean enemy. He's going around smacking the enemy. <laughs> no. But his power is destroying the enemy. That's right. Uh -huh. And in the greatness of thine excellency. In the greatness of thine excellency. Thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Ah, uh, glory to God. Amen. All right. Back in uh, Ephesians. Back in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4. According, According to that, has chosen God us in has him. chosen us. In him. Are you in him? In Are him. you in them? Yeah. Holiness is the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God, the understanding of the will of God. The preaching of the agenda of God that your life may evolve mm -hmm. around the thinking of God. That's right. The integration of men's opinion is unwelcome. That's right. And the infallible thinking and infallible wisdom of God. That's right. Man must agree to all what God said. Yeah. Oh, yes. If God say be holy, every preacher better tell you you better be holy. That's right. Amen. I said every preacher. Every preacher. I don't care who you are. Don't go telling me how long you've been professing what you've been professing. Who cares? <laughs> That's right. That's right. God spoke plain. According as he has chosen us in him before. All right. Hey, 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 television viewer and you that are here. You said God chose you. Well, what did he chose you to be? Mm. Then why are you claiming to be something else? Well, Pastor Jenna's labels don't matter. If it didn't label, why did God put a label on himself? On himself. That's right. That's your dumb opinion again. <laughs> That's right. Stop leaning to your own understanding. Amen. God labeled himself. That's right. God labeled himself. He shall be holy for I, the Lord your God, am holy. God labeled himself. God labeled himself. You got that much education? You got that much understanding? Yeah, you so deep and so spiritually motivated? You're going to tell me, well, oh, labels, it doesn't matter, you old fool. And in Isaiah chapter 62 and verse 12. Listen. And they mm -hmm. You sit at the table. That's right. One container's labeled pepper. One container is labeled salt. Right. Another container is labeled sugar. That's right. If it matters for your food, mm. why are you that fool to think it don't matter for your soul? That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. 
Grab that container. Son, give me the salt. And if you bring pepper, you're going to can't you hear? Can't you hear? Can't you read? <laughs> can't you read? I want the salt. <laughs> That's right. That's God right. put the holiness on the table and you went and got Methodist. <laughs> Now I'm asking you, can't you read? Can't you read? <laughs> That's right. I'm asking you now, can't you read? Can't you read? Amen. God put holiness on the table and you went and got Hindu. Well, can't you read? Can't you read? Amen. Wonderful, wonderful. God put holiness on the table and you went and got a can of apostolic. Can't you read? That's right. Ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Holiness is the rules and regulations that God set. That's right. To govern the whole universe. And, and in Isaiah chapter 62 and verse 12. That's what? And they shall call them the holy people. No, -uh. they shall call them the apostolic people. They shall call them the holy people. Pentecostal people. The holy people. Jehovah Witnesses. The holy people. The Mormon people. The holy people. Amen. Amen. And you look at Pastor Jennings as if I wrote the Bible. That's right. You want everybody to be what you are. Me? Mm. Me? Pastor Jennings? Pastor Jennings? My Lord. Let me go hood on you for a few minutes. <laughs> That's right. Listen, Jack. If we left up the G, <laughs> if we left up the OG, I wouldn't be holy. No. 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 And if up the G, I wouldn't be holy. No way. No, I'll be out there with you. That's right. That's Am I right, I said? Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Holiness come and strip everything. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's why when a child is born, proof that it came from the womb, it has what is called afterbirth. Right. The mother water break. And the child come into the world and the doctors have to clean up the residue of the placenta. That's right. Off the body, clean it up. And then it weighs the child because the child gains some weight in darkness. You are out there in the womb of the world, yeah. covered in the placenta of sin. That's right. And you gain weight. Gain weight. That's right. And God wants you to lay aside every weight. Let us lay aside every weight of sin and the sin which do it so easily beset us. And run with patience. With patience. The race that is set before us. You don't run quickly because you'll overlook too much. That's right. Hallelujah. Run, take your time. That's right. Hallelujah. Take your time and do what, Pastor Jesus? Jesus said, learn of me. Learn of me. And that's where we made our mistake. We, many of us repented of our sins, was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, received the Holy Ghost, and got in the hurry. But we didn't take time to learn of mm, him. That's right. Well, Pastor Jennings, you're right. How could I learn of him where I was? We wasn't being taught of him. Yeah. So you just went in survival mode. That's right. And as a result of such conditions, you've done the best you can. Backslid. And what seed was planted start gnawing on you, you better get back to God. That's right. And then you went church hunting. And when you went church hunting, you start picking up everything from wherever you went, which made you worse. Right. You became more confused. And to my sad regret, became terribly spiritually used. Yeah. Not by God. That's right but by the bad information distributed by false prophets. Amen. So you became a product Amen. of falsehood, and what falsehood does is start to undo what good yeah. is there. That's right. Falsehood is as powerful upon the human family when they are weak. Yeah. 
See, holiness is not just only to build your character, but it's build your spiritual stamina. That's right. To build up your spiritual immune system. You have to have some form of resistance against Satan. You know the way your parents used to do when you was little, give you that cast oil? Mm. That castor oil, that Father John's, that Mark of the Beast medicine, the three sixes. Nasty. But it worked. Holiness is rough, tough. It demands you give God attention. That's right. There is no compromising God. There is no bargaining with him. He says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. You say, well, I bow my head and raise my hands. He didn't tell you to do it. No. Raise your head up and put your hands down and do it like God says. That's right. He says, we are buried with them by baptism. You sneak off to a Catholic church and preacher throw some water on your head. Yeah. God didn't tell you to let a preacher throw water on you. He said, be buried. Be buried. buried. You go to a church and say, well, I got baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's what Jesus said, do. He did not. He did not. Jesus said, go ye therefore and teach all nations to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So when you go down the water and come up and the preacher said, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, don't get out the water yet. That's right. Don't you get out the water yet. Why? He ain't finished. That's right. When, you, when, when, when he ready to get you out, just tell him, oh, hey, 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 bishop, hey, wait, bishop, wait, bishop. You didn't call the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's I'm right. still waiting to hear it. What's the name? Bishop, what is the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? You took me down, but oh, you ain't called no name. Right. Father's no name. Son is no name. Holy Ghost is no name. He's Father because he created everything. He took on a title of Son because he offered up a body once through the eternal spirit. He's Holy Ghost because he's the keeper of the church and the power of the church and the disciplinarian of the church. That's and right. he's the preacher in the church. That's right. <laughs> But who is it? Jesus. Jesus. Yes, that's right. That's everybody got to do with everybody. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. All right, Charlotte, 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 Charlotte. Amen. And all of you that are here from surrounding areas, that goes for all pastors, all mothers, all choir members, all bass players, drummers, horn players. If you play a washboard in your church or that's click right. two spoons together. <laughs> that's right. That's right. If you the harmonica blower. <laughs> Amen. If you got a tub with a big old string on it tied to a broom. Mm -hmm. This is for you too. Acts 2 and verse 38. If you are homosexual. <laughs> That's right. Am I right, Harris? Amen. You got this to do. This to do. Follow me and get me. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Acts 2, 38 says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent. No, bow your head and raise your hands and accept Christ as your old personal Savior. Peter said unto them, Repent. Join the church. Repent. No, touch the TV screen and pray a sinner's prayer and say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Come into my heart. Wash me as white as snow. <laughs> Repent. That's what you did, didn't you, Will? Yes, I did, Pastor. How many times did you do that? Do you even know? I can't even count it, Pastor. So many times. So many times. All at home. In All the house. at home you did it. And it didn't help you. It didn't help me, Pastor. Still was on your way to hell. Still was on my way to hell, Pastor. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> my Lord, do my you, Lord. Was you, listen, hey, hey, Bill, was you that are here? Were you on your way to hell with William? <laughs> He ain't on his way now. Hallelujah. You're on your way now, are you? No. The help of the Lord. Everybody that was baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost Amen. was baptized wrong. That's right. Your mother, your father, your family, everybody. That's right. You didn't understand what Jesus said. That's right. You didn't understand, didn't understand it. it. He said it, and the devil blinded you to it. That's right. Jesus said, go ye therefore. And teach all nations. How? Baptizing them in the name of the Father. At that one hey. word, the preachers went running. That's right. That one word you overlooked. Baptizing them in the name. daddy overlooked his wife, his mama, his children. Sometimes the daddy got so anxious he baptized his whole family wrong. 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 That's right. Innocent victims of misunderstanding. That's right. I want you preachers to hear this because 
You didn't do this, many of you. Amen. And you and your entire congregation got to go back in water or fight it and die and go to an everlasting hell. That's right. That's right. Now, you may say, I'd rather obey Jesus than obey Peter. That's what they say. Let's, let's stomp that out, would you please, before we close. Let's see what Jesus said about that. In St. Luke chapter 10 and verse 16. You don't mind reading that, would you, sir? St. Luke chapter 10 and verse 16. You're never so kind to read it for us. I'll read it gladly, Pastor. St. Luke chapter 10 and verse 16. What did he say? He that heareth you. He, look at what Jesus said to his apostles. He that heareth you. Hey, you that said you'd rather obey Jesus than obey the apostles. Look at what Jesus said about this. He that heareth you. He's, he's talking to his apostles. He that hear you. Heareth me. Oh. And he that despiseth you, you don't obey the apostle? despiseth me. You reject Jesus. And he that despiseth me what? despiseth him that sent if me. You reject that flesh, you reject the spirit that sent that flesh. That's right. That's right. Hmm? That's right. Amen. Now go to church. Now go to church. <laughs> Amen. Go to church now, I'm preaching. Yeah. If you're a pastor visiting Hallelujah. here tonight, you get up in your pulpit tomorrow and keep telling folk, be baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You are a false prophet and a liar after you heard this, and you're on your way to hell. That's right. You, your congregation, and your old daddy. That's right. Oh, Amen. Matthew 20 and 19 says what? Go ye therefore and teach all nations. And do what? Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. There was no baptism being performed there. He told them, go do it. Go do it. Now, let's see where it was done, where it was fulfilled. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Hear this, viewers. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. No, join the church. Repent. Prayer sinners prayer. Repent. Bow your head and raise your hand and accept Christ as your Savior. <laughs> Repent. <laughs> Amen. God wants you to be sorry about your sins. That's right. When you're sorry, I ain't got to fight with you. No. Someone said, I'm going to obey what Jesus said because what Jesus says is in red letters. What about the Bible that ain't got no red letters? <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's how blind you are. That's how blind you what are. Jesus said is from Genesis 1, 1 through Revelation 22, last verse. That's right. Oh, that's the words of Jesus. Yes. Why? Because the Bible said all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God. Of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instruction, and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. Then Peter said unto them, repent. You got this to do. You got to repent for having those women preachers, repent for smoking, repent for gambling, repent for lying, that's repent right. for living together, not married, repent for wearing uh, your wall green hair and your leaves stick on nails. That man got to repent for wearing dresses and that woman got to right. repent for wearing pants, whatever holiness speak against. And you did it. You, you got to repent, repent for doing it. That's right. That's right. You got to repent for being gay. Yes. That repent. pastor got to repent for flying that rainbow flag and it ain't representing Noah. No, it's not. <laughs> no, no. Repent. Amen. Order in the church. That's right. That's right. Some of you out there now sitting with your cigarettes in your pocketbook and in your inside pocket or in your glove compartment of your car. Yeah. Came all we here smoking and then put a bunch of lifesavers, chewing gum, and Tic Tacs in your mouth, holes and everything else so nobody will smell your cigarettes. That's right. What you got to do for smoking? Repent. You and your boyfriend is here. You're living together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What Amen. you got to do? Repent. All right, Shaq. Uh. That's right. All right. Repent. What you got to do for shacking up? Repent. Well, Pastor Jennings, the only reason why I'm there because he promised to marry me. And uh, it's been three years now. I don't know why he won't do it because you've given up free goods. That's right. <laughs> In his eyes, he's thinking, let freedom ring in the aisles, in the aisles of a solitude. That's right. He ain't thinking about marrying you. No. And all your goods is free. That's right. If you shut down your grocery store, perhaps you'll rethink things. Yeah. And stop supplying him. That's right. Am I right, I said? Amen. 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 Repent. <laughs> Amen. The holy book said. Then Peter said unto them, repent. All right, you just living together, not married. You might as well pack up. That's right. Make this your last night. <laughs> That's right. You fellows are standing around the wall. <laughs> you came tonight, but your girlfriend didn't want to come because she don't like what I'm preaching. Mm. You, know, you and your girlfriend sit on the bed and look at us and 
she's smoking and you turn us on and she's like, oh, can you watch that old crazy Gino again? All he do is put everybody in hell. Right. You just mad because you on your way. That's right. That's right. But repent. The says, then Peter said unto them, repent. I'm telling you, you may as well stop blaming Gino Jennings. I'm telling you right now from the depths of my heart. <laughs> I dare, I am not responsible for this. That's right. Amen. Yeah, I played keyboard for over 45 years and was offered to be a millionaire playing in one of the top jazz millionaire clubs in the world. Amen. I was in high school offered $24,000 a month, and some folk don't make that a year. Yeah. They offered me $15,000 cash up front. Yeah. If I would just sit back, they gave me the choice of the piano that I want. Mm. Oh, glory to God. Amen. <laughs> But you know the Lord just have a way of just ruining your life. <laughs> but when God ruins your life, it's for your good. That's right. Yeah. Who is it, God? <laughs> it had the atmosphere that I like, you know, 1930, 40 atmosphere. Had the upright bass player of my choice, the drummer with his brushes. Mm. Had a horn section, saxophone, trumpet with the mute in it, a few trombones, baritones. Like, you know, a lot of men don't play baritone sax too much no more. I had baritone, soprano, alto, and I knew how to make them coordinate together. Certainly I Certainly. could. Oh, Jesus. But because I was saved. <laughs> That's right, Carter. That's right. I was saved. Right. I'm a teenager, offered $24,000 a month. <laughs> Baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. I would go in the music room after school is over. They wanted me to join the jazz band, but I wouldn't. So when I got in there, I got the jazz band musicians because I never knew how to play it by music, but God gave me a ear, and I can play any style under the sun. Yeah. And I played any style. And uh, so I would go in the music room, and some of the band musicians would sneak out, come in the back room where I was, and I just arrange a rhythm right off the top of my head. And my music teacher, Mr. Mayola, here come out looking for everybody. He said, mm, y'all must be in there with Gina. <laughs> I said, Mr. Mayola, you go out and let us, let us do what we're doing. <laughs> Ms. Mayola said, Gino, you're going to pass up $24,000 a month. I said, Mr. Mayola, I can't do it. Amen. I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. I repented of my sins and was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ at six. My mother and father didn't send me to the water. Amen. God bless me to understand what it was. Yeah. I came through speaking in tongue at 11. Wonderful. When I was 13 was when I first stepped in the pulpit. Amen. And preached Acts 38. Amen. Amen. I've been preaching for about Hallelujah. 45 years preaching. I've been pastoring going on 38 years. Wonderful. I've been baptized over 52 years. Amen. I had the Holy Ghost over 46 years. Lord. And I'm only 58. Amen. <laughs> you had those numbers up, that'd make me over 100. Or over 100. So God put me in this. He stripped me of my youth. Yeah. Young man coming up, I love the box. And also took mixed martial arts. Mm -hmm. and did it well. Amen. Come from the hood, I held my hands with great joy and satisfaction. <laughs> yes, the Lord. All right. All right. Yes. Coming up in the hood, we would box, slap box, body box. Gave us joy. Mm -hmm. But we did what was called a fair one. Right. Fair one mean best man win. After that, hell, we go shoot the hoop together. We didn't beat you up, then pull a gun out on you. That's right. Amen. Amen. God stopped me. Hallelujah. In my youth. Wonderful. Never smoked. I never found it appealing. It stunk. 
Never drink. Wonderful. Liquor was not attractive to me. Right. Never drink. Why? I had a ruler in my house. Yeah. His name was Ernest. Amen. He was my father. Mm -hmm. I didn't come up in a home of drinking and smoking and cussing and foul language. I didn't come up in a home like that. What yeah. holy teaching they knew, they held that. Yeah. Amen. My mother was, my father was stricter than my mother. I'm glad to see my mama made this trip. How you doing, mama? You all right? All right. <laughs> my father didn't believe in Christmas, but I can depend on mama. All right. Amen. All right. She, we wouldn't get a tree, so mama did it the slick way. Don't get a tree, but buy them gifts. My father would tell her, I told you Jesus ain't born on the 25th of December, and if you don't stop celebrating that Christmas, Josephine, you're going to go to hell. Yeah. But we can depend every year that my mother would be a heathen God knows. <laughs> and she was a good heathen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. She brought us much gifts and much dress. Yeah. <laughs> father would tell all of us, all right, y'all, keep it up now. And hell, you're going to lift up your eyes. So eventually, Mother, she came around. No more gifts. But coming up in falsehood, I'm glad I didn't come up in the truth. Yeah. Because coming up in falsehood gave me a better appreciation for the truth. Amen. Sometimes coming up in falsehood, you only see things one side of the fence. And you be blind to a lot of reality out there, or you're naive. That's right. And a lot of people that come up in the truth is naive to what's out there, and therefore, but their naivety sucked them up out there. That's right. Because they overestimate themselves to underestimate what's out there. That's, That's right. why we come right down to earth among our brothers and sisters and tell you exactly what's out there. We just don't preach Jesus and him crucified. That's right. We teach you what's out there. Yeah. But we teach what's out there in here because in some ways what's out there is also in here. That's right. That's right. Don't say, Pastor Jenner, wait a minute. You mean to tell me what's out in the world is in the church? Oh, yeah. If you don't believe it is, you haven't read the Bible. I haven't read the Bible. If you read the apostles' teaching when they pro preach against sin, they was going up against the church. That's right. I remember on one occasion, Paul went among the Corinth, yep. and the brothers were sleeping with their mama. With the mothers. It is reported commonly. Somebody say, what? Get this, second, uh, first, first Corinthians. Corinthians chapter 5 and at verse 1. It is reported commonly. Wait a minute. Amen. How often was this, this being done? Get chapter and verse again. First Corinthians chapter 5 and at the first verse. Not sinners. That's right. Church. Baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. That's right. Church. He can Messiah up my higher. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Church. Church. Hear yeah, this good. First Corinthians 5 and verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles. Holy. Mm. I let you know all fornication is not the same fornication. That's right. The language of the Bible says such fornication. such fornication. That means you did a particular kind of fornication that not even the uncircumcised did. That's right. So all fornication is not the same thing. There's some fornication that come under the, con the heading of abomination. Abomination. And you can commit an abomination. Yeah. And yet you can commit just fornication. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? A man and woman ain't married. Fornication. Fornication. A man and a man, that's a, for, that's a kind of fornication, but it's abomination. Abomination. Now do you get me? That's right. Glory to God. It is reported commonly. Uh, how often? Commonly. Not once a year. That's commonly. It was regular. That there is fornication among you, and such fornication. Church folk. That's right. That's right. Church folk. Church folk. I folks say if you find fornication in a church, that's the devil's church. Is this the devil's church? Is it? Amen. It is reported commonly. This was this was common. That there is fornication Why? among you. Someone said, well, they couldn't have the Holy Ghost to do that. What kind of narrow mind do you have? <laughs> Who told you that? Who told you you can't have the Holy Ghost in sin? Who told you that? Who told you that? 
the apostle was walking with Jesus. That's right. And sinned. And sinned. Yes. Yeah. So Jesus looked at Peter, get this behind me. Satan. 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 Well, Pastor Jennings, he wasn't saved yet. All right. Let's get the second chapter of Galatia, when he was saved. When he was saved. That's right. I get you before he was saved, and I get you after. Get you he after. Got second chapter, book of Galatia. Let's see how the apostles got wrong. In Galatians chapter 2, we're at verse 11. Come on, son, and read quick. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I would stood him to the face. Apostle Paul said, when Peter came to Antioch, I stood him to the face. Because he was he to was be blamed. blamed. For before the certain came from James, and he according did to the word the of God, the qualifications of a bishop is to be blameless. That's right. And that's what it said with him. That's right. It said be blameless. Blameless. But how did Paul find Peter? I would stood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Blame. Amen. Amen. You see, we love to go into the nook and crannies of the script. <laughs> that's right. Amen. Amen. I don't look at the apostles above what's written. I look at them according to what's written. That's right. And when you look at them above the what's written, you blunder. Yeah. Because the scripture, even Pastor Paul said, let no man think no higher than they are, but think but think soberly. That's right. All right. For before the certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. Yes. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. Mm -hmm. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him. Yes. And so much that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. Yes. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. If you don't walk upright, what are you doing? What are you doing? Right. Pastor Jennings, are you saying when they didn't walk upright, they was of the devil? No, I'm not saying that. But let's see who is saying it. Give me the book of John. First John chapter 3 and at verse 8. That's what? He that committed sin is of the devil. <laughs> Amen. Well, I didn't say it. He that committed sin is of the devil. And what did Paul say the apostles did? But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. They did what? They walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. They wasn't living holy right there. That's right. And when you don't do that, what did John say you are? He that committed sin is of the devil. Let's close out again with Acts 2, 38. Let's go back. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Anybody want to be holy and sanctified tonight and Hallelujah. get right and be baptized in the water in the name of Jesus Christ, stand on your feet. Stand on your feet now if you want to get it right. Stand on your feet if you want to get it right. Oh, you look at here. Look at this. One of all of you that are standing, all of you that are standing, go right where they are. All of you that are standing, Hallelujah. go without those doors there in the back and on the side. <laughs> Do you see this? Do you see this? Everybody got to be baptized. Come on. Come on. Come on, Charlotte. Charlotte, Hallelujah. come on. Who will take off? Yeah. Hallelujah. Everybody got the door. Come on. Come on. Come on. The might as well. Everything. Everything. Harrison Jones, both of y'all go baptized. I said this is, every, this is what everybody got. Everybody. This is what God do in the truth of God everywhere. Yeah. Come on, you got to repent and be baptized in water. In the name of Jesus Christ, your father, your mother, your sons and daughters, and you got to pack up and leave the false church you're in so you don't burn in hell when God comes. That's right. Pastor got to do it. Mother got to do it. That's right. Relatives, everything. You might as well come on. Come on and keep it coming. Keep it coming. Come on. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You viewers that are upset, I want you to look at that. That's right. It's the Lord's doing again. Again. Yeah. Hallelujah. Everybody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Everybody got this to do. Hallelujah. Everybody. Everybody. The Lord said what I say to one, I say to all. Oh, hallelujah. Everybody. I hallelujah. think of the comment one young lady made. She didn't think that we would accept her. Mm. She said, Pastor Jennings, I hope you read this statement. She commented on one message. She said, I want to be a holy woman. I hear you teaching holiness, she said, but I got dreadlocks, tattoos, 
lesbian life. She said, I'm out here, and I don't believe, I believe if I come, the mothers in the church won't accept me, and the people won't accept me, and you won't accept me. I told her over there, you come on in here, we will accept you. That's right. Come on. Mm. Hallelujah. We will take God, you can't scale a fish till you catch it. That's right. You get men in these dumb apostolics, a woman that come in there with pants and they tell her you can't come in here or they'll stop her at the door and make her put on some baptism clothes dress. What you gonna make her put it on for? Just for her to take it off when she go home? That's right. We preach the word of God and when God hits your heart, That's let it. God strip you. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Hallelujah. Wonderful. I tell the mothers, don't, bo don't bother them. When they come in with pants on, lipstick, joy, don't you say nothing to them. That's right. What do you mean? Don't you go do God's job. That's right. God said, preach the word. Preach the word. Let the word do it. That's it. You leave them alone. That's right. Wonderful. Wonderful. What good is a sinner throwing all that off? She ain't repentant. Right. That's right. She ain't sorry about wearing it. That's right. So what's going to happen? She's going to go right back to it. That's yeah. right. Amen. Amen. If she come in with hot pants, just keep her away from the brother seeing her. <laughs> I don't want no brother get in the spirit. <laughs> See, a lot of these churches, besides helping the people, they've done more damage. Yeah. So a lot of people that come from these churches, I got a tough job in repairing them. That's right. Because they lost, a lot of these folks lost confidence in church. Yeah. And millions are thanking God for this program. Like one man wrote me, he said, you gave me hope wonderful. all over again. Wonderful, wonderful. Hope. Wonderful. A man 83 years old and said, you're the first preacher I heard that preached with a Bible understanding. Wonderful. He said, you understand the Bible. That's it. My objective is to help you, that you may develop in the body of the Lord's bride. Yeah. Why are you in the body of the woman, the church? The, church. the bride, the wife, yeah. developing into sons and daughters. Yeah. My job is to feed you. That's right. That's right. Why you evolve in the church. Wonderful. Like a woman that's pregnant, she start teaching the child before it comes from the womb. Yeah. She teaches the child based upon how she carry her own self. And the child eat what she eats, so you can't eat this anything. That's right. So I just can't eat anything and then preach to you. No. So I have to make sure all my manna yeah. Yeah. come from heaven. That's right. None from theology, school, and philosophy. All my manna got to come from heaven, not from Martin Luther King. <laughs> from heaven. That's it. He had a dream, but we're living in a nightmare. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Amen. I have to lay in the Bible. There's no sermon written out here ever. 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 I never know what I'm going to preach before I get up here. That's right. I don't, pre I don't be in a side room praying, Lord, give me the message, Lord. Oh, Father. Nah, I don't oh, do that. No, you don't. <laughs> mm -mm. God made me a preacher. That's it. He keep that stuff in me all the time. That's right. That's right. Amen. Sometimes my brothers, they jump on me and attack me and try to see if I'm ready. That's right. Amen. I got some good brothers. Amen. I'm very down to earth with them. When Williams and Huey and Shay get together, <laughs> God help them. I know I'm going to have a fight on my right. hands. That's right. Shay and Huey will boost up Williams and, well, he carry out their orders. <laughs> They go with some scriptures and they tell Wayne, Wayne, why don't you go on and just look, look, all three of us can stop Pastor Jenner's mouth today. <laughs> and William said, you know what? And then Williams will come to me and Shade and Hugh is standing back up like they're security. <laughs> <laughs> Williams come to me shaking his hand. He said, I got you now. I said, you don't give up, don't you? He said, I'm not going to give up until I take the word of God to you. <laughs> I told him, good man. 
All right, I tell him, where is the brand new scripture? That's right. Yeah, brand new scripture, then I take it from him. That's right. You can see him running down the hallway. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love the brotherhood. We're That's enjoying true. this thing, brother. Amen. God knows we are. Amen. All right, who give me the correct time, brothers? 925, 926, just like false prophets. They never speak the same thing. <laughs> all of my visiting ministers, we thank God for all of you. All of you, come on back tomorrow. Amen. Prayer begin at 11 o'clock. Don't you go back to your church. That's Amen. right. Don't even stop wasting your time. Why don't you just stop wasting your time? Well, I just come tonight because I watch you on television, and I want to see what you like in person. I'm the same way. Same way. <laughs> shoot you in person and shoot you over the air. <laughs> the only right. difference is you can't turn me off in person. That's right. You can get mad and go out there and catch your breath and come on back and pick up where you left off, but you might as well face the fact your years of going to church is a waste of time unless you do it like the Word of God said. That's right. All right, let us all stand. Oh, don't forget, turn the clocks back one hour tonight. Don't you go back. <laughs> you turn your clocks back one hour. Come on back 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Hit your knees and pray to this one God. Eternal God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you once again for your divine wisdom and a perfect understanding of all things. We thank you for the message of holiness that you reveal to your apostles and open up their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. We thank you for the many that are here tonight and the many that's going down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Live up to your word and fill them, hallelujah, with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue at the spirit of the living God give utterance. Give healing to the sick, strength to the weak. And mend the hearts of all those that are broken. Stand by us and be with us and protect us as we go back to our separate destinations. Bless the remaining service on tomorrow that the word of God will have a free course. We can never thank you enough for what you're doing for the truth of God. Continue to add daily such as should be saved, and we we'll forever magnify thine great name. These blessings we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one true God of heaven and earth. Let every heart say amen.